Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with space exploration. And we have... Wow. Already 53,000 antimatter turned into canisters, actually. While I wasn't looking. Uh, I haven't continued since we stopped yesterday. I just had this running for a minute. Okay, so just one stack of that uh, is going to fill a spaceship antimatter booster tank. Not that we need to fill it uh, to rescue our ships. But I guess it couldn't hurt to wait another couple of minutes until we get a little bit more. I've already got something set up at Oblung Lobolata that will refuel them uh, when they eventually get here with uh, basically no fuel. As long as there's less than 5k in a pair of tanks, it'll pump it in. However, even this ship, uh, Stardust number 5, that's sort of almost there is going to take... What? Oh, I think I'm looking at a different ship. Then what happened to the one... Oh! Wait, no. I think I... I think I got confused. Yeah, Stardust is the new one. Oblong has... That thing that I just showed with that setup. Oblong 5 is almost there. Or is it? Uh, 13 hours, 22 minutes and 55 seconds it's going to take uh, without intervention. Unfortunately, we can't just park a ship next to it and pump fuel in. So this is how this rescue mission is going to work. We quote-unquote board the ship, which just means our player gets teleported behind it. We put down spaceship floor next to it so that we can put certain buildings down. What happened to... I think the particle collider that I was carrying got put um, over here. So we need... It was probably a particle accelerator actually it was one or the other to fill or empty uh what the what 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 the what did i miss antimatter canister uh we actually need the accelerator to empty it so uh first well at the end of the chain we're gonna have a particle accelerator uh, to support that, we need negative 273 degree thermofluid. To do that, we need hypercooler, hypercooler, and thermal radiator too. Uh, just because we can only bring barrels of 25 degree thermofluid. So we need to turn it into cool thermofluid here. Um, we're not bringing cryonite slush with us. Uh, we're turning cool into cold and also 25 degree thermofluid here. I guess that needs to loop back in on itself. I, I should probably do a little... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a little blueprint of this. Before we go. Um, otherwise, we could run into some kind of little mistake when we get there. So let's say empty 25 degree thermofluid. We also need this pipe to loop back. And this one needs to make negative 100 into negative 275. Uh, both of these spit out t half of it as 25 degree thermofluid also. 
So it's going to look something a little bit like this. Um, I wonder if there would be a more convenient layout here. Probably. Let me just make a little bit more room here. And then... Uh, some pipe. Not quite. It's going to be four no matter what. Okay. I think that's all we need, right? Apart from some power, obviously. So canisters go in here. Uh, I guess the thermo fluid has to get spat back out this way. I'm not going to go to the trouble of... Well, I guess I easily could if I turn this into fill thermo fluid barrel afterwards. But um, it's really not worth the trouble. Uh, we're going to empty thermo fluid barrel. We just need room for an output for this. Otherwise, it's not going to continue uh, emptying our antimatter canisters. Mm, that's pretty much it. Not too difficult. Alright, let's make a little blueprint regardless. Uh, and I'm just going to say... Empty... Antimatter canister. That's going to go in our inventory for now. Oh, uh, and yeah, the, this is going to line up with, um, with the input to the ship, of course. That's fine. Okay, so where are we headed now? Uh, how many of these do we have? 123 already? Wow. Uh, I knew this would go through our antimatter kind of quickly, but maybe I should put a cap on it. Oh, we've still got quite a lot. Oh, it's still almost full. Yeah, I'm not too worried about this. I'm pretty sure I rate checked it, and it's it's consuming it slower than we produce antimatter. I'll I'll just put the I'll just drop the priority. Um, because it's obviously very important that our antimatter gets to our ships. I mean, that's why we're doing this rescue mission in the first place. Um, alright, I think we are just about ready to go. Oh, um, I should make absolutely sure we've got enough spaceship floor tiles. To make this happen. Probably not, actually. Where did I put it? Yeah, we definitely need a bit more. Uh, so this is, what, 160... 136. Cut that down a little bit. I'll still bring the extra tiles that make up a rectangle just to make sure we've got more than we need. So that is actually... Five or six stacks of spaceship floor. Okay. Let's just call that 300. And I need to make sure I take uh, assembly machine. Let's put this here. Uh, just the one. 
And we also need one of these. And two hypercoolers. Uh, and we've already requested the particle accelerator, I think it is. Alright, let's pick that up. Head back to the mall. And I'll get the construction spiders to head back as well. What? There we go. Uh, what are our other spiders doing right now? They're not full, I don't think. Get them to pick this all up and head back to the mall. Hey, Rayclaw. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, uh, so what's next? Uh, we were building more spaceships, but I think we've run out of... No, we haven't. That's weird. I thought I put a lid on... We probably already had the cubes here. Oh yeah, we've still got 268. Okay, that's cool. So we're not requesting Naquium cubes in the mall for the moment because we have other priorities. Uh, but we can still make a few more spaceships. Is there an archive that I can watch? Uh, yes, it's on YouTube, but it doesn't go all the way back to episode one. I apologize. Uh, you can find the YouTube link below the below the stream. Uh, don't forget to turn this back on. Wait, don't take my anti-matter canisters. I need those. Um, canister. Zero to infinity. Cool. Oh. Would be pretty awkward if I flew out there only to find that the only thing we were missing was antimatter canisters. Also, I don't need all of this scaffolding right now. Where did I put the request for that in? There it is. That's one of the nice things about auto trash. Um, let's just say we'll carry at least one stack. Got it, thanks, no worries. Alright, uh, I think we've got everything. Why do I have a spaceship console though? Whatever, it's fine. Let's jump in our player ship. Still the fastest ship that we've got. And let the rescue mention... mention? Let the rescue mission commence. How's our Nacrotite flow looking? It stopped, so we still don't need more of these machines, surprisingly enough. Uh, how many ships do we have in motion bringing back Nacrotite? We've got the first iteration of them, which is all on ion engines. We've got six of those going all the way out to Black Mirror, which is a bit far. Uh, this one has the same problem some of the others did. It's probably blocking another ship from landing right now. I just need to deconstruct to get the bots to empty this to some extent. Get some of the stacks of media point defense ammo out of the way. And then we undo that. And we'll have room for the ice that it was missing. Which was a condition for takeoff. Uh, oblong Lobulata ships. We've actually got 12 of them. Something like half of them are antimatter. Uh, it seems we've got 
several of them waiting their turn. And this one's not taking off. Why is that? Did I disable auto takeoff here? I did. Why is that? Um... It's bring back ice. That's not the way this is supposed to work. This is another reason to use set requests. Uh, okay. I don't... We've got fuel, we've got water. We're full of Naquitite. I don't remember why I told this one to wait. It's got way more fuel than... It could have been one of the ones that needed to refuel. Well, that would certainly help. I wonder how quickly this will fill up. How many bots do we have here? 353. And it's a stack size of 10. And the bots can carry four at a time. But it's a lot of stacks. Uh... Oh yeah, that's right, we can just read contents from these ones. 2... 3k already. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's get going. And I'd better keep an eye on that one for a little while. Uh, the first ship we're heading out to rescue is... Oblong 8, I think? And we'll need to set the target for Oblong 8 to this ship. Otherwise, we can't catch up with it, even though it's basically stationary. Or maybe if I just tell it to stop. Actually, I want to see if that works. Just tell it to stop. No, I'll have to... I'll have to set its target back to this ship. Um, just so that I can board it again. So we'll leave that as is for now. ETA is already down to 9 minutes. And we haven't even reached 200. That's cool. So it's going to be like 7 minutes or something. Before we get halfway to Oblong. That's pretty good. Uh, what should we work on while we're waiting for that. Let's continue deconstructing the old stuff. That's weird. I must have broken a pipe somewhere. I did break a pipe somewhere. Uh, here? Um... What? Oh, that was to go into the old... Uh, the old base, I see. Alright, what if... I don't think these spiders are carrying any flat solar panels. Uh, what if we reconnect this? I don't think they're even carrying that much. I'm not so lazy that I want to waste all this chemical gel, though. Um, we could just move this around, and I don't know if that's going to get the 67 fluid out of there if there's no power, actually. Uh, but more to the point... I'm going to hijack a couple of pieces of pipe here. Get rid of that little bit of uh, petroleum. It's relatively cheap. And then this one. And then we need... Hmm. This is a trickier puzzle than I realized. We can't use picker dollies to rotate these. 
Uh, this has zero cosmic water in it. Why don't we use that? Nope, nope. There we go. And then... Same thing lies here. We need to borrow this uh, underground. Oh, I guess we don't really need that to be an underground necessarily. Whatever, the main thing is we just need to connect these pi uh, pipes up. And... Picker dollies gets a little bit weird after you mark things for deconstruction. Now we just need one last little corner piece. Fantastic. So is that all connected now? I don't think it is. Oh, yeah, there's this thing in the way. Oh wow, that starts working even before we actually get rid of that piece of pipe. Alright, cool. So that should be our chemical gel... No? Uh... Is that it? it? Sounds like it. It stopped again. How much more difficult is it going to be just to rescue this little bit of... It's not that much... It's, it's not that small an amount. It's like 60,000. So we've got fluid, fluid, fluid... This all seems to be connected. Oh, this part's actually full. Oh. Why is that one solitary piece of pipe missing? It's kind of strange. There we... It stopped again. Why did it stop again? Where is... This is... Oh, what the... Why? It's really weird what pieces are randomly missing from here. Alright, I think we finally got it. There we go. Uh, we still haven't picked up this loop. I guess I need to increase the priority. Um, same goes for the water. And didn't take long for something to come to pick up our chemical gel, though. And I'll add the same high priority pickup for the last of our light oil. Alright, cool. Let's just leave that there for now, rather than trying to pick out which things we should or shouldn't deconstruct. And move on to starting to deconstruct one of the old sushi bases. I think we'll start with these batteries and possibly uh, heavy girders. ETA is less than five minutes. Very good. Um, we got our ice build working yesterday. That's looking pretty smooth. Very nice. I guess we don't need that pump right there. It's empty at first. Uh, it's just water. Who cares? It's water on Nalvis right next to some water. Um, and then, let's check on Oblung Lobolata. 
we're almost filled up on this ship. We've got another one heading back. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, and how is our new ship coming? We've got the floor down. That goes here. And now we wait. Mostly for the energy beam receiver to heat up, but obviously for the fuel as well. And water. Oh, that is heating up quickly. A little bit slower now that we've got... Wait, what? Why did it... What? What? What is going on with this heat exchanger? It jumps up to 3000 degrees and then drains back down? Huh? That's really strange. Well, uh, in any case, we can probably guess by looking at the temperature here about how long it's going to take for this thing to warm up, and it's already, like, almost 10% done. That's kind of crazy, actually. So our bottleneck will actually be just building the ship and putting fuel in it. Four minutes until we reach our... It was Oblong 8 we're going to first. Our rescue target. Fantastic. What should we build in the meantime? I would really love to get to designing Deep Space Science 2, but we're waiting on more Naquium as ever. Oblong 1 is Ion. It's going to take... 25 minutes just to get back here. Is number 10 okay? Uh, What? Number 10 doesn't have heat. Why? Why is this? Please tell me that's the only one. Number 7 looks fine. That's... Oh, that's actually one of the... I think I clicked the wrong thing. Oh, that's Orchard 7. We don't have a, a whole bunch of ships that didn't get heated up, right? No, 9.9k. One job, indeed. Veldak, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I guess... So, it's coming from Nalvis. doesn't have any heat. Let's... Oh, this is the one I was sending to Moore's orbit? Wait, is it at Moore's orbit? Yeah, this one was, like, busted earlier. I think it's already there. Closest Moore's destination. Anchor to Moore's orbit. Okay. Yeah, this was the one... We can, we can fix this remotely, I th think. Uh, if we anchor it to Moore's orbit, we can actually aim an energy beam at it. Do we have a spare somewhere? That's pointing at the old place that we were building the ships, so yes. Moore's orbit. And we're just going to point that there. Unfortunately, we can't do it with the ships when they're just in random places, I'm pretty sure. Which one is this? Deadwood 8. Well, actually, let's aim for bullet. I just want to confirm this. Yeah, we can't... 
what? I don't know where this is, but I'm scared. Wait, that's... That's the same surface. Yeah, so that's what happens when you try to aim it at uh, a ship that's just out there somewhere. Alright, we'll leave this one here until it fully heats up again. And in the meantime, I'll just confirm that we've got energy beams pointing in all the right places. It seems like we do. Uh, I should really put labels on these. Maybe I should be using that... Um, maybe I should be using that mod that lets you put nice letters all over the place. I think these two are both aimed at the new ships just to heat them up quickly. Cool. That's all good then. Three minutes to our destination. We have another ship leaving Oblong, which means we've got another ship loading it up. Fantastic. Yeah, after doing it both ways, um, I really prefer to have the logic for launching the ships on the outside. Because if, uh, not to mention using set requests uh, instead of having static requests that we would have to update for every ship. Uh, now that we know we can use math to read the contents even when we're using set requests, it is overall a much, much cleaner way to do things. And this thing has power. Fantastic. Very cool. Or hot, I guess. Power plant really looks different vertically, but that's fine. How much do we have here? 16,000 uh, Naquitite. Oh, these two are outside of the robot network. When the ship isn't here. That's fine. How much does our new ship carry again? Uh, Stardust. Stardust 1. Oh yeah, it was 33 chests. Uh, 15,840. What is this ship doing? It's waiting... Oh, I have to click engage. That's Stardust 1. How long has it been here? Wait, where's it going? To Stardust. Where, where is it right now? Uh, we've got fuel, we've got water. It's, it's at Nalvis, isn't it? This is the first time it launched automatically, so I had to tell it to engage. And it's just been sitting here the whole time. Uh, and meanwhile we need more Nacritite. What's its ETA? Well, I want to check something, though. Uh, Stardust. 17k. So we have more Nacritite stored here than can fit in one ship. That's good. ETA is already down to 18 minutes. That's pretty decent. Oh. Excuse me a second.
probably help the sound quality if I shut the window. Now then. Uh, where are we going now? I mean, what are we doing for like two minutes while we wait to get there? Should probably just check things are all working. But usually it's when you look for something specific that you find an error. I could probably do a build that reduces the number of machines that we need to make sand, but it's already not that many. Have I... Uh, we should definitely make another one of these rough data storage substrate builds. And then we can get rid of the old one with absolute confidence. Actually, let me just double check. I'm pretty sure this isn't enough to keep up with blank data cards at full speed. 136 per second. Yeah, that's nowhere near enough. Uh, we've got two blocks that each do... 173 per second. Jeez. All right. Construction spiders over this way, please. Get rid of all this old stuff. That's in a weird spot. Update these. Whoa. That takes me back. Definitely wouldn't use regular rail signals there. Not at this point. Not when I know better. Okay. So we're just going to copy paste this, and hopefully there should be nothing in the way. Fantastic. Probably don't have the uh, productivity modules to support it just yet, so we'll set it as a lower priority. And more to the point, I'm looking forward to getting rid of these old builds with lower throughput and 200 assembly machines. Fantastic. Spiders should be able to reach everything if I leave them in the middle there, I think. 42 seconds. Height. And then, I should probably get this one to rejoin the group, but having just a single spare spider lying around is really handy, actually. How soon until we get more Nakotite? That one's leaving. Eight minutes. Cool, cool, cool. On the one hand, this is nice to see and very useful. On the other hand, I currently have two space manufactories making blank data cards, and I'm having issues keeping those supplied. Yeah, they are very, very thirsty. <laughs> kind of depressing. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Marsh. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, um... I don't necessarily go for exactly the best ratios for the entire base. It's pretty much, most of the time, my default was, we've got this rail block, how much can we fit in one rail block for this product? 
but I've been cutting back on that since UPS has been dropping and seeing just how much we're overdoing the throughput for certain resources. So that's why we see a lot of half blocks now. But I've built the half blocks in such a way that we can expand... Basically, we can double this relatively easily. Uh, but yeah, these blocks give us a little bit less than one belt of blank data cards each. So we've got 82 blank data cards per second out of the whole thing. We are here. Alright, uh, moment of truth. Did we bring everything we need to, fi uh, to fix this? First of all, we're putting down some spaceship tile, because that's the only thing we can put here. How much space do we actually need? Here's our blueprint. Uh, a little bit more. Two more tiles. And then... Up to about there. You're joking. No, this isn't happening. I don't think I got the barrels. Oh, I, I was expecting something like this, but to forget the barrels of thermofluid. Uh, well, I guess it just had to be something, didn't it? Let's at least, while we're here, uh, figure out exactly what this blueprint is strictly needs to look like. One job. Okay. Um, where'd that blueprint go? Select new contents. Include tiles. I can't believe I've done this. There's no way we can, like, make thermofluid out here or something. Uh, bonk indeed. 2BD, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, these ships don't actually have a door. However, if I get close enough to the console, I should be able to... Does it not have a door? It does not have a door. Uh, I should be able to board the bullet. There we go. Well, good thing this trip only takes like eight minutes or so. Uh, now this orbit, or, or, orbit, there we go, and why don't we see if we can set things up so that, that bar those barrels will just be here by the time we get back. Do we have barrels here? We do. I don't think we have random thermofluid handy, but we know it's in the rail network. Um, hmm. Where would be the laziest place we could set up some thermofluid barrels? Let's grab our construction spiders and I'm tempted to just 
I think I might just extend the robo network down here. Temporarily. Classy. Okay. Bill. Domo fluid. We need some chests. Uh, I guess the RoboPod is coming. Empty barrel. Uh, let's just limit it to... I don't know. What is this stack to? 10? It's only 50 per barrel, right? So 500 thermofluid, would that be enough? Or should I carry a few stacks? Uh, let's see. I should probably assume that we're going to need more than that. Uh, empty antimatic canister. A hundred thermofluid. But we need more than that because cooling it down we lose a little bit of it. I'm going to take like three or four stacks just to be sure. I'd rather not too clever by half this and have to make another trip. Okay. That's cool and great. Let's, uh... Let's head back and pick those up. Meanwhile, on Nalvis, this is already... F oh, we've got all of these prods. That's good. That was very easy. Uh, so what's our max rate from this whole thing? 272 rough data storage substrates per second. Versus the max consumption here of 347. Why don't we go ahead and make one more block like this? Uh, and then... And then we can deconstruct all the old ones. Let me add a tag here. Rough data storage substrate, and soon to be rough data storage substrate. up the old signals, get the spiders over here. I think that is pretty much it. Seems like it. And then we can finally dismantle this old stuff right here. Uh, we've got our somewhat deconstruction spiders. They now carry... Wow, way too much. Why are they carrying speed and efficiency modules? Uh, I think only the leader is, actually. 
but that is a lot of modules. I need to sort that out. Um, first thing I'm going to do is switch off the inputs for these. Actually. And... I want to set the request threshold for the outputs really low. So that we get rid of the last of it. But if we... We're going to have trains coming every two seconds. Uh, if we don't wait for it first. Okay, in that case... Let's just switch those off for now, and we'll come back to that. Where is our module box? It is waiting for modules. Why do we have no modules? Is that... It is in the robot network. Oh, these don't count as being in the network? There's only 36 of them, though. There's no blue circuits. Um... Okay, then. Do we have a... Throughput issue, or is something broken? We have no Holmium cable. Uh, that's been in abundance for a while now, so what's going on? No plastic, again. Uh, this one has plastic because it's prioritized, but there's no Holmium plate. Why is there no Holmium plate? Core fragment Holmanite. Uh, where are we even getting that from again? I think for, uh, Taser? That was our first. I think this one just sends it back via cannon. It's still working. Where else are we getting Holmanite from? The module inserted problem I had earlier is solved slash bypassed. I now make a manufacturer of modules in the tooltip thingy. Build it next to the manufacturers I want to insert the modules into and set manufacturing I want. Wait for it to build, delete existing manufacturers. And copy-paste the ones with modules into the place where the ones without were. Oh, like, the sort of thing you have to do in vanilla? Uh, in order to do this stuff remotely? Uh, it definitely says something that I don't remember where we get our Holmanite anymore. Morpheus is beryl, this is coal. Holmanite, Holmanite. Uh, why don't we look at... Not just spaceships, please. Uh, Holmanite, here we go. Taser, that's in... Via Terra. That's actually a huge Holmanite source. Uh, we used to get it with spaceships, but then we realized how much fuel that cost. This all seems to be working. We've got so many cannons because they take so long to recharge. I could perhaps build an antimatter... 
uh, pickup station here. So we can just pick it up with ships. But for now I want to point all of our antimatter ships at Naquitite. So are we actually short on Holmanite at all? How can we check? Holmanite core fragments. Here we go. We don't seem to be accumulating Holmanite. Uh, where are we? What? Eighty thousand Holmanite in the trash block. Uh, okay. Let's look at our smelters. I see zero Holmanite here. What? Holme Holmium powder. No, I forgot. This has to happen first. So this is totally saturated with... There's no plastic. Uh, okay. So Holmium powder itself needs plastic. So it's all just plastic, actually. Um... Didn't we make a block just for plastic? It's all petroleum. Didn't we add a whole lot of oil pickup? We've got no source of crude oil over here. Didn't I also add yet another oil block? Uh, I guess we have to add at least one more. Let's put this one here. And how fast does this consume water? Maximum, theoretical. 2,000. That's kind of a lot. I don't think our 1200 per second... Well, this is 1200 per second pumped in on top of trains can bring it as well, but we could definitely add more pumps here. Maybe I shouldn't build it this far from the water, though. I could even... I don't really want to landfill this. Ooh, what about here? Yeah, I like that much better. Alright, we'll copy-paste the new block. Throw it in here. Add some offshore pump. Just how big is this? There we go. Uh, and figure out exactly where that water needs to go, actually. That's pretty convenient. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, perfect fit. Nice. Uh, we don't need the old power poles. That we happen to pick up with the copy paste. We do, however, need one more pylon over this way. I can't believe just how much oil production we need to make. I mean, the old blocks are a bit slower, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Two coal liquefaction plants. Uh, and apparently we're still struggling to get enough petroleum to keep up with our plastic needs. Is 
Is there yet another place that I should be building an oil outpost, perhaps? We added this one. Is that working? Yeah, it is. That's weird. Uh, I guess it's not, actually. Do we need more fluid wagons? We're not getting messages saying that we don't have enough. What happened here? Uh, why don't we limit... Why are you holding a media defense installation? don't recall requesting that. Let's put that here. There we go. Uh, 90 seconds till we get back to Nervous Orbit and pick up the barrels we foolishly left behind. Gonna need to pick up some prod modules. Hopefully we have enough. Uh, we don't have nearly enough. By which I mean we have zero there. We don't have the prod modules because we don't have the blue circuits. Because we don't have the plastic. I left out because we don't have the holmium cable in the middle of that. Because we don't have the petroleum. Which is what we're making right now. Which we can't productivity module because all of those things. So... I guess it'll have to run without productivity modules for now. Not a fan of that. Send them back here immediately. Get this part finished. And probably straight back to the mall again. How is our ship at Moore's orbit doing? 1400 degrees, that should be enough. Uh, what was your destination, Oblong? That'll be fine. Uh, Oblong the Blata, off you go. And as for the energy beam that was pointed at that, let's send it back to where it was. There was also something from right at the start of the stream. Or was it last stream? Something I needed to remember. I think it was Interstellar Quartermaster 2 is eventually going to run out of power. going to take a long time to run out of power. It's just sitting idle with actually like 350 kilowatts of power consumption. Hmm. It shouldn't be too much longer, I guess, before this one is summoned somewhere. Uh... All of that is working, right? Star 104. Let's look at Hankerus, for example. That is a lot of media defense installation ammo still. Hmm. Well, there's a problem I didn't anticipate. There's, there isn't really room to squeeze a solar panel onto that design, either. 
and all of the pickup and drop off stations for it are standardized. We're almost back at Nalvis Orbit. Uh, spiders are taking their sweet time. Looks like they're resupplied. Let's move them straight back here. And finally, we're five seconds from getting there. Let's get our spider ready to go. That looks kind of weird. Okay. Grab our... Uh, uh, thermo fluid. Wait, what did I just... Upgrade plan that into? I think it was the requester chest. Don't take my stuff, actually. I think we can fit another one pretty comfortably down here as well. Uh, we kind of need to add a roundabout, actually. I think I'm willing to do that. Let's grab our landfill. I wish there was an auto landfill function, or auto scaffolding function, that just filled in what you need to do a blueprint. We'll see how that lines up, the starters. Alright, Thermo Fluid. Of course it's in my trash slots. Thermo Fluid, go! And back to our ship. How's this one doing? 10,000 degrees, nice. Uh, you are headed for... Stardust? I can't remember what number we're up to though. Stardust, one, two, three, four, five, six. Stardust. All right, let's check. We've got fuel. We've got water. We've got sulfuric acid. We've got everything except for the modules here, which is fine. We only need a handful of modules to, like, place another mining drill or something. I think we're ready to go. And let's immediately start preparing to build the next one. And we're also ready... I cannot mine this vehicle while I'm sitting in it. Makes sense. Let's get going. It was Oblong 8, I believe, is the first one that we're heading to. Yes, cool. Oblong 8, go. I think the spiders are placing uh, signals right now. Yep. Cool. When do we start getting some plastic though? Coal should be incoming. Fantastic. And we'll get the spiders down this way as well. 
Actually, before you go back to the mall, do that. Whoops. Add the correct tag, actually. Alright, what's our ETA? Seven minutes or so? That is seriously misshapen, but what am I going to do now? Hurry up and place the last of the landfill. There we go. This goes here. That should be enough for the trains to be able to do their thing. And once more. I might lower the priority on these ones without the modules, though. That way we should still get the maximum uh, from our productivity bonuses. Alright, so rescue mission, take two. Uh, we are on our way with probably way too much thermofluid in barrels, uh, quite a lot of antimatter canisters, particle accelerator I think is the only one we need, but we've also got the particle collider, one thermal radiator, two hypercoolers, a space assembly machine so that we can empty barrels, and a bit of pipe. Not sure if it's useful, but there is a mod called Landfill Everything that will add a landfill to every tile with an entity in a blueprint. Can look quite tidy. That does sound useful. Thank you. Lanarian, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's check on our outposts here. This one's waiting for a ship. This one appears to be working just fine since we don't have a ship stuck here anymore. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, and then five. And that's after this one. We've got quite a few ships heading back full of Naquatite now. After unclogging that little issue. We've also got one leaving, which tells us we are processing Naquatite. We're a very long way off automatically launching these shuttles, though. Let's continue deconstruct... Oh, here we are. I forgot. Continue deconstructing the old stuff. They should have room for all that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they've still got tons of room. This is oddly cathartic. Alright, let's see if that doesn't overload them, actually. Oh, I may have gone too far. Alright, let's send them back to the mall with all of that. And... Uh... 
this weird bit of straight rail sticking out. I don't like it. Let's make sure we build the rest of this. We should still have enough stuff to build all of that in one go. Oh, and did we make sure this is pumping? Uh, yes, that would appear to be the case. Fantastic. We also have trains dropping water off here. But let's not forget to add the same thing to this one. Doesn't quite want to line up as elegantly this time. But that should be no big deal. I've already got power coverage. Probably don't need to even tell the spiders to come back this way. Hopefully that'll be enough to help with our plastic issue. Is this thing just about ready? It's still making stuff. Why is that? I mean, I know there's a lot of iron and glass dropped off here, but still. I guess that's going to take a while to empty. Uh, what about the old scrap system? I think we switched that off ages ago, actually. No? Well, it's empty regardless. Did I just make this one higher priority? Mm, nope, it's the same priority. That's kind of weird. Regardless, let's get... This group of spiders to pick up all of this. I'll wait till they've picked up everything else before I get them to pick up the chests and get them to stand right next to it. Much, much, much higher throughput for the bots that way. I'm not worried about this little bit of heavy oil. Oh. Well, never mind that plan. It's a relatively small amount to pick up anyway. as well, please. Don't know what we're even going to use this block for. It's kind of a nice luxury to have. Did we even make a new oil processing block? I think this is coal. It looks kind of similar. Uh, where are we getting our oil core fragments? I think all of them actually come from in-system and we get them via cannon. We've got a lot... Yeah, I mean, we've still got uh, planets with crude oil that we haven't bothered to tap uh, in our solar system, but they're pretty small. It might be what it takes to get plastic over the edge, though. So, we should definitely build a replacement before we switch this thing off. All the vanilla core fragments. Let's look at what this outputs. 
Stone, vanilla core fragments, and crude oil. Most of our crude oil processing is around this way. Vanilla core fragments are up here. And the cannons can land wherever they want. I think... Uh, somewhere like here makes a lot of sense, actually. So let's send the const... Oh, the construction spiders aren't done yet. Agamo, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Beep, beep, beep. Good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Holy hell, I'm obviously not thinking big enough. I mean, if you like UPS, you might be thinking small enough. Especially for space exploration, because it is just huge. Um, this mod just keeps going. Alright, they should be ready to go, actually. So, I would like to steal from myself. Wait, do they have the prods yet? I guess not. We can still build the new block and get ready to replace the old one. I would like to start with this as a template. Wait, no, crude oil... Uh, crude oil is going to be a bit different because we need the fluid output. But it's only one fluid output, right? So all four of them have the same output here. So we don't have to worry about the rotation of the buildings or anything. So if I steal this design from myself, uh, even though beacons are in the way in the middle for these two, that shouldn't be an issue. We can just have the output pipes on the same side as the output belts, or the input belts rather. Or I could probably just move the beacon up a couple of tiles. That's easy enough. And then obviously just adding some crude oil output down here isn't much of an issue. Alright, we'll start with this. Get rid of the input constant combinators. Move that up a couple of tiles. Add in the usual pattern of fluid output. And When I open the Universe Explorer in my space exploration run, my UPS drops to one quarter of what I have otherwise. Is that normal? Uh, somewhat. If I go to... I think it's... If I go to the star map, we get... No? Universe Explorer. I could have sworn I remembered one of these dropping UPS, but... Uh, obviously it's not that big of a deal. Maybe if we go into a system? Not really. What if we turn on all the information? Huh. What about this? Surprisingly, no. Maybe they optimized it since I noticed that. Also, we're all the way back up to almost tw oh, 24 UPS. Fantastic. We're very gradually getting rewarded for deconstructing this old stuff and replacing it with builds with fewer machines. Like, what is this? Well, this is 
perfectly understandable when all you have is uh, regular beacons and tier 3 modules, actually. But uh, from the perspective of we now have tier 2 beacons and tier 6 modules and 20 UPS, uh, this is 240 machines is not so good. Uh, but at the time, builds like this, it just felt like, okay, cool, that's probably the last time we ever need to do rocket control units, right? Because we have the throughput. Two minutes till we get to the ship we need to rescue. Or take two. Let's get this one started. We still have... Actually, not quite enough antimatter storage tanks to build this next ship. Unless I change the design, which I will not be doing. Uh, I think I will actually... 8 times 160. 1280. I think I will actually keep bringing the Naquium cubes here. I would rather... We, it, it, we don't even get the little burst of science that we're looking for if we stop producing our spaceships. So I think we'll just focus on making sure we have enough in the long run. That should get it to deliver to the mall, I, I think. Nope, it's going somewhere else, actually. Um, okay, let's force the issue. Because I literally just need a couple of... Wait, what? No. I, I literally just need a couple of cubes so that we can make, like, two more uh, booster tanks. And speaking of which, that's weird. Oh, wait, what? How do we have 69 antimatter engines here and thirsty... thirsty? 30 <laughs> spaceship antimatter tanks. I thought... I thought we were short on those. Well... I just went to the trouble of picking up those few cubes for no reason. It's fine. The more of these ships we make, the faster we get the Naquatite until we finally reach a critical mass where we're actually getting it at a good rate. Um, but yeah, the UPS drop when you go to Universe Explorer, that was, I think it was Universe Explorer, if not the star map, that was something I noticed a while ago, but I can't seem to replicate it today. Here's our ship catching up with, uh, our target again, finally. This one's already aimed at bullet, right? Yeah, good. At this rate, by the time we rescue the second one... Just kidding, it's got another 12 hours. More like 13 hours before it reaches its destination. Thanks for checking that, no worries. Uh, all right, what else should we clean up on Nalvis? Are we starting to get plastic? I mean, we've got tons of plastic here, which is what I want. But we also need... I think I should prioritize this as well. I already did. 
I want it to set I want to set it to the same priority as this one, which is probably a hundred. There we go. Alright, so plastic. Not to mention vulcanite blocks. Uh priority one hundred. We need this to get holmanite. We need holmium. Uh, holmium rather for a lot of things. But most importantly, blue circuits, unless we want to revert back to a much less efficient recipe. Um, we need lots and lots of blue circuits so we can keep getting modules. And the more productivity modules we churn out, the more resources we get for the same input. more we're able to keep everything satisfied. Oh yeah, where's our construction spiders? Here we go. Alright, so this is going to be core fragment processing crude oil. Rescue ship should be there, yeah. Either that or just a few more seconds. Uh, we need to get them to go pick up delivery chests. Alright, board oblong 6. Or was it 8, I think. Let's grab our blueprint. Actually, it's in my inventory. Put this here. I distinctly remember carrying enough spaceship floor for this, and then some, and then I didn't change my requests for spaceship floor, and yet... Alright, this just got a little bit trickier. How much do we need? Uh, tile ghosts? We need 57 spaceship floor. I'm pretty sure we don't have that on the bullet. I think the only thing we had spare in there was spaceship walls. I think we're literally just going to have to try scavenging. This is the bare minimum, pretty much, for how much spaceship floor we need. At least to have all of these machines active at the same time. We can get four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine on each side here. That's 18. We're looking for 57. Well, I may as well just pick this up and see if it's enough. If we get really desperate, we can start removing the walls so that we can pick up the floor below that. So I guess we will get this done. It's just, uh, just a bit unfortunate to have to go this far. 29 to go. Will we get there without having to get really drastic? And we're going to have to pull the same trick at the next uh, spaceship as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm pretty sure we've got that here. We probably didn't even need the pylon substation, but that's okay. All right, let's do this. Uh, the red is a little bit distracting, but that's only 
the ship checking if it could take off. Alright, so... That's a lot of barrels. I didn't actually mean to put that many in yet. There's our super cool demo fluid. We need a hundred before it's any good. But there's our antimatter canisters. Oh, I did set these to the fast recipes, didn't I? One second. Yeah. We'll lose a little bit more thermo fluid this way, but who cares? 60 thermo fluid, 65. And. Once it gets started, it's not going to take nearly as long to get the next one going. Well, actually, I guess it is going to take a little while. Because all this comes out as 25 degree, so this loop has to start again. And well, it's asking for way more power than we have. Let's see if we can help that. That's better. I guess we're actually just going to be bottlenecked on this machine itself. Which gives us only 33 antimatter stream per second. Uh, can we go minus 400%? plus 200 percent so we can definitely do this and still go minimum power consumption let's do that uh and this one's a little bit different but minus 400 plus two yeah no that's fine Okay. Uh, still gonna take a little while though. 80 per second. Hmm. How much do we really need? How much fuel did it cost us to get here with the bullet? Uh, we're looking out of 200,000 divided by 4. We've got 48,762 out of 50k. So about, let's call it 1300 times 4. 5,002. So it actually probably takes like, let's call it 6,000 to get to Oblung Lobolata if we're being safe. Uh, maybe a bit more than that. How about to be super safe, let's call it 10 for each trip. Um, so about 15,000 should be more than enough for this to get back home. Although we do have a bunch of antimatter here waiting to be used as well. Uh, fluid system contents, 3k. This is... This is going to take longer than I thought it would. Hmm. Also, Vario, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Well, there's one piece of floor that we didn't actually need. Let's update this little blueprint of ours. I guess there's like three pieces here we don't need either if we do the pipes a bit better. Come to think of it, I should have done this. And there is actually room to do it that way without any more pipe. Oh. 
So this just immediately adds a thousand to the storage system, right? Oh yeah, literal, literally one tick. Cool. Uh, I need to take the empty canisters. So once we get another 6k, we'll be almost there. Uh, I didn't anticipate this part. I thought it would be really quick, actually. So, what should we do in the meantime? Oh yeah, we're building that uh, oil thing, aren't we? And I need to get you to go back for... Oh, here it is. Some delivery cannon chests. We might have some in the old mall. We do. Fantastic. Uh, also need a signal transmitter, actually. Which I'm pretty sure we have here. We do not. Hmm. Let's quickly make one. And go. It's not going to be that quickly. Where are the blue circuits? Here they come. Need another five steel. Why are they taking so long with the steel? Oh, it's just the inserter being weird. Uh, yeah, keep putting more big electric motors in. That's what we need right now. Oh my goodness. Just put the last five steel in. No. <laughs> How many big electric motors do you need? And more batteries. And more... Okay. There we go. That's... We did it. We got our one signal transmitter. Fantastic. Good job. Uh, I forgot to change... I better be a little bit quick about updating this. We need to change the signal. Uh, and I guess I also need to go to all of the receivers. What did we call this? Nervous CF Vulcanite Processing, that makes sense. So Nervous CF Oil Processing? Rebellious Inserter? Yeah, malicious compliance all the way. Are we not... Are we, are we not carrying... our transmitter? Oh, no. Yeah, it's still in the robot network. Uh, signal transmitter. We definitely requested it. The bots were just busy deconstructing it, I think. I'll give them a minute to find it. Actually, no, I definitely don't want to place that while I'm not looking. And send the same... Uh, send a... The chests are empty, please send core fragment vulcanite signal when that is not true. I don't think we have the throughput to break this, but I would rather not risk it.
Okay. How is our ship looking? Why do I... Why did this get to six canisters before I had to pick it up earlier, and this time it was only two? Because we don't have enough domo fluid? Huh. That ran out faster than expected. Um... Good thing I brought a lot of barrels. Like, way more than I thought would be necessary, actually. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't just sort of do the math and add 10% or something in this case. Did we update this with the modules? Yeah, that's good. Okay, what is this train doing here? I thought I saw the exact same train waiting here earlier, but apparently not. Alright, you've got your transmitter. Fantastic. So we're going to change this to... Uh, Crude oil core fragment. And on the red wire we've got if everything equals one, output everything, input count. On the green wire, anything equals one, output anything, input count. That's exactly the same considering we only have one type of signal here. Uh, so we're reading from the red chest with circuit wire into this one, and green chest, a uh, green circuit wire chest into this one. And then when you put signals into... If I click on it, it messes it up. Oil processor. Uh, if you put red or green circuit wire into a signal transmitter, it preserves the wire color going across. Alright, so let's go to Moors, and I guess I don't have the infrastructure in place for using both sides, but we don't have that much throughput here. Um, but I'm sure we could manage it. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, not four, actually. Get rid of the green wire on these ones. Oh. I think that's going to mess up... I was going to say the iron plate, but we're done with these iron plate ones. Okay, then. Uh, why don't we... use these for core fragments. We have a spider or something here, surely. Yeah, good. Uh, I don't suppose we still have a remote connected to this one? Okay. Uh, we finished mining that Erudite as well. May as well pick up all this stuff as you go. Maybe I'll leave that there for the moment. So we have actually N. That's not in danger of overflowing, is it? No, good. Do you use multiple signal transmitters slash receivers per surface? Hope you don't mind my trying to pick your brain for UPS optimization tips. Yeah, I don't think the transmitters and receivers uh, necessarily cost anything, really, like compared to a combinator. 
uh, for UPS. But yeah, it's um, usually just the one. What is this transmitting? Oh, this is for resupplying the stuff. Okay. This needs to be... Uh, Moors. Right, now's it, now this core fragment oil processing. Yeah, that's right. Alright, so the first... One, two, three, four, five... Of these are going to be on the green wire. And the rest are going to be on the red wire. Get rid of that. Uh, and the signal is core fragment crude oil greater than zero. That shouldn't need any change. Core fragment crude oil. Yep. Both of these are outputting. So on Moors we should see on the substations. Both of those signals are active. Now we just need to target the new block. Uh, uh, it was red wire down the bottom, wasn't it? So that's on the left. And green wire on the right. Cool. That should be way more than enough to keep up with our drills here. Also, we could go to the trouble of adding a little power plant. Uh, that works off beam receiver instead of slowing this down during the night. But yeah, that should be all it takes. How is our 20k? That should be more than enough. I'll let this recipe finish. Okay, so we need core fragment crude oil. And uh, I guess I'll copy these again, change them a little bit. And this is going to be or fragment crude oil requester. Do the spiders still carry the tier 3 modules? They do. So let's put those in for now. Uh, I think I've got... Yeah, here they are. And then once those modules are actually in, we'll bump it back to tier 6 for when we have it. Although this isn't as high a priority. I don't know. I was going to say this isn't as high a priority as other things. But if we can spare more crude oil core fragments, get more crude oil, keep up with plastic maybe. Okay, um, I feel like I should put the output where the input belt is, actually. Just because we can do that in, like, four pairs, it's a bit neater. 
Also, how much crude oil would this produce at full speed? What? Uh, okay. That's kind of fast, though. 228 crude oil core fragments per second. We can't keep up with that. Um, this is because we're on tier 3 modules. They're faster for the productivities. But how much... Rude oil or fragment. Uh, over the last hour, we've been producing 3k per minute, or about 50 per second. So this is way, way, way faster than we're actually going to get. Hey, hey. El Poncho, good to see you again. Oh, well, you're welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. I'm going to deconstruct this. And we'll fill out the spaceship floor tiles again. Hopefully our spaceship can forgive us. that everything? Not quite. Why do we have bots hovering? They're my... Oh, they belong to this robo-port. Uh, do we have a storage chest here? I guess not. I was trying to figure out if that's where they took the floor that I thought I had, but no. Alright, let's do an integrity check. Uh, it looks like it already passed. Cool. Let's board the bullet train. Or rather, bullet ship. Pipes on the second from bottom all the way left are missing. I'm sure they are at this point. Uh, now we head down to Oblong 5. And as for Oblong 8, you can head to Oblong Lobulata. It's got two G's in the middle. Oh, that's a glorious sound. We outside of the system? Absolutely. Templar Water. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this is our home system, Calidus, and all of those little specks with words next to them are our various interstellar spaceships. And right now we're rescuing a couple of them that somehow managed to run out of fuel. And because it's antimatter fuel, uh, the process for refueling them is a little bit complicated. Uh, but we got there eventually. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well, by the way. Did we get our plastic up here? We did. Fantastic. Fantastic plastic. Priorities are important. I mean, it's better if, theoretically, if you can just have at every stage throughout production, you produce more than you can consume. Theoretically, kind of, but not always easy to keep that up, even if it is arguably practical. Uh, prioritizing this is very important because we need Holmium cable for blue circuits. Should only be a few minutes, uh, two and a half minutes left until we get to our next chip. Uh, let's add this tag. What was I looking for? Crude oil. Or fragments. And we've got the prod breeze in place. Let's request better. Uh, 
Um, so I think I want to get rid of these output pipes here, where the beacons are. I guess that means we can put those back where they were, just for the sake of consistency. Now then, uh, let's calculate it with the tier 3s, because that's going to have higher throughput. 940 crude oil on each side, that's actually not that difficult to deal with. Um, I will have to... Hmm. Let's get rid of the old power poles. I don't think I do actually have to change this part very much at all. I still want the double pumps to put stuff into the train. I only need to move that by like... Nah, this is fine. So that's how that add-on is supposed to work. Uh, which add-on? Do you mean a mod or something else? I guess this can go here. That looks weird. The module inserter one. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, it's quite easy. Uh to use. I just don't have prod sixes right now, that's why it just has a item request slot sticking out. Alright, so that goes there. And we still have our loop. Wait, we don't even need uh do we? We get vanilla core fragments, stone and oil. Yeah, so we don't need a fancy unloader on this end at all. We can just do one physical output on each side. Uh, and we're definitely not going to have this kind of throughput for the solids. Even before we upgrade it to uh, tier 6 modules, we've only got a maximum of just over 90 core fragments per second. Um, so I think we'll just go with that. Okay. Uh, so just a regular old bust insert a balancer. High priority pickup station. This one will be vanilla core fragments. It should be fine. Actually, I'm sure that's overdoing it for the output. Slightly more than one belt. I know it's going to be less than one belt when we use the prod sixes or better, and I know that we're probably never going to actually saturate this thing consistently, so I think we will calm down a bit with the belt output here. Oh, we've got stuff. Of course we do. Uh... We don't need to do anything particularly deliberate with the belt output. What's the individual machine's throughput? Less than three per second out. fine. So 
So this will be on one side. This will be on the other side. And these two should even out as well. It should be basically a balanced belt, as far as we're concerned. We'll do long arm output here. Fast output here. Copy this part. That's not quite right, actually. And then... Merge. I can't copy, paste, flip if I include the pulverizers. Let's not include that part. And then, just like so. And we've already got our two belts here. Wait, no, we need to, um, we need to split off the stone. Which is going to be pretty low throughput, actually. I guess just to simplify things. Actually, no, let me just throw this here for the moment. I want to do the same thing on this side. Blueprint, this part, remove the stuff that doesn't let us flip, remove the modules, create, flip, and this goes here. Something is amiss. Why does flipping that make the input belts different? What? I don't understand. I think there's some asymmetry I'm not seeing here. Is something busted? Where did that blueprint go? Okay. I can see why the outside ones are different. Oh, this is this part's wrong. What's with these two? Oh. Does that mean way down here we've got a temporarily twisted bit of belt that I forgot about? Yep. Good to know. Are we at our destination? Uh, zero seconds. Perfect timing. Actually, no. I think I know what's happening here. Oblong 5 is still attempting to go to Oblong Lobolata. And because, even though it's moving at basically zero speed, um, we're not catching up to it. Okay. Let's throw down our blueprint again. Careful. Careful. And we will, once again, need to cannibalize parts of the ship in order to refuel it. Actually, let me 
we had a little bit spare last time, so let me try removing bits that are a bit more noticeable. So we don't have lots of random little bits of ship that we have to remember to replace. Uh, what do we need here? Nine more pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hull integrity is overrated? Yeah, we don't need it. All right, and then we put in our thermofluid, and then we put in some antimatter canisters, and then we wait until this requires our attention again. That's probably more than enough. Okay, so that goes there, that goes there actually. So now if I do the same thing as I did before, make a blueprint of this, remove the pulverizers so that we can flip it, Remove the combinator. Uh, it should look about the same if we do this. There's a little bit of pipe missing in the middle here, but that's not that big a deal. Alright. Uh, pipe. And... Pipe. Why are there three inserters here? Probably because... I was going to say because there was one there before, but no, I think something was off by one earlier. Alright, we got this stuff out of the way. Fantastic. Now we can redesign this part properly without worrying about where some of our stuff goes. Actually, that bit's going to be a problem. There we go. Okay. Uh, stone... The whole thing is going to be hardly any stone, right? 18 per second. That's before we upgrade the modules. That's less than half a belt. So I'm okay with doing this. That should turn those belts around. Fantastic. And then these two down here. Then we need to connect this. Uh, that needs to stay uh, to say stone actually. Otherwise, we're going to get the average, including the fluids, which is going to throw things off just a little bit. Or I could have said stone has to be less than or equal to zero.
Uh, I don't think we need any fancy circuitry here. Which actually almost feels weird at this point. Uh, we don't need the super high pickup. Actually, yeah, we do. Um, both stone and vanilla core fragments, if they pile up here, will block the main product, which is crude oil. So both of these can be considered high priority outputs. What's going on here? Is there a wire missing? I don't think there is. Hmm. Everything less than or equal to zero. Oh, it was 48 chests before. That's the negative average of what's in these chests now. And over here, that's actually already correct. Uh, I need to see... Here we go. I need to see some... Oh, we haven't done the fluid, that's why. Uh, kind of important, that. We've got all the space in the world to do our fluid outputs. I think we already did that on this side. Okay. Um, some space pipe might not go astray. But of course the distance isn't quite right there. I want to pump this into this side and this into this side. So we'll do something like... How far back does this go? We're going to need more. We only need like 1,000 on each side, right? Yeah. So just an occasional pump should be more than sufficient. Let me bring this over, actually. That doesn't happen to line up very well, so we'll do it like this. And... I guess we don't need to connect this to this side. Alright, there it goes. Can we steal this? Perhaps? Uh, it needs to come down here anyway. How about... That is max distance, right? I think it is. Yeah, it's max distance. Oh, that would be one-off, wouldn't it? Uh, hmm. It's fine. That's what we'll tell ourselves. Where does this intersect? That is probably... Yeah, it's over a thousand pumping speed. It'll get slower as this fills up, but there's room for two train loads here, and it's a high priority pickup. Shouldn't be an issue. All 
right, that is our updated oil core fragment block. We need to go to all of our oil planets and update uh, where the cannons are aimed. But first, let's check on our antimatter situation. 14,000, that should be way more than enough. I'll pick this up now. I'll let it get rid of that antimatter first. And then. Uh, using the navsat is a bit easier. Put that there actually. I think that's all of our floor. Put down a storage chest so the bots from that robot network know where to go. Can I not pick this up? Oh, I actually can't. But for some reason I have a deconstruction planner, a deconstruction planner in my inventory. Alright, integrity check. Looks like it's good. Fantastic. Send me back to the player ship, please. And Oblong 5. Back to Oblong Lavalata. What a beautiful sound. Alright, we did it. All of our stranded antimatter ships have been fixed. Speaking of antimatter ships, we are ready to launch this one. Uh, where are we up to? Stardust number seven. Wow. I would have thought at a glance we were we had more than six of these ships considering I don't see any moving back and forth here. Uh, there might be a problem at Nalvis with them. No? Alright, we're going to have to check on that. Do I want to go anywhere else while I'm out here? Um, we've been to all of these stars to pick up... How about Br Brunus? Shinzo. Let's go pick up the mysterious structure at Shinzo. As a treat. It has to be pretty satisfying to get all those ships running again, absolutely. And it'll be very satisfying when we reach a critical mass of throughput for Naquitite. Or Naquim. The tin can... <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be Stardust 8, and we're sending it to Stardust, that is connected right, yeah I updated that blueprint. Alright, let's check on all of our Stardust ships. Number one is, looks like it's not moving. Uh, why not? Wait, what? Hold on. Where, where is it actually? Closest is Hagen, that's in our solar system. Destination Stardust. Speed is minimum. It's got heat. It's got water. Is it overfilled on water? Oh. Okay, we're gonna make a little bit of room. Apparently, that wasn't enough. There it goes. Once we hear that steam chugging, it should get to be operational again. Where even is it, though? 
How did it get here? With water too full for output. That is very strange. Okay. Uh, why don't we just remove a bit more? Whoa, hello. It's, uh, it's starting to produce power. So we had to remove, like, let's say a thousand water. Okay. The others might have the same problem. Uh, number... S closest Stardust destination, Nalvis. Number two... Seems to be working just fine. 16 minutes at max speed. But it's not moving. We haven't clicked engage. Oh no. Was this the same problem? What? You're joking. Are we going to have like all of our Stardust ships that we launch? We have to wait until they get to Stardust and then we have to tell them engage when they're on their way back. Oh my lord. We could have had so much more Naquitite by now. Which one was that? Number five. Number six. Okay. Uh, apparently we don't have a number seven. This isn't going to be... Wait. I might know the reason. I think we have to give it a speed signal. Um... Because that was the problem with our module box. And this is the first ship that I've fully automated with antimatter engines. And we've just spanned so much defense that it doesn't have to slow down. So I didn't give it a speed signal. Uh, it has nothing... Target speed unlimited. So you would think that would mean it would go automatically. But I think... If we just... What's its top speed? Over 200. Um, Stardust 1... You have gone as fast as 214. I would like to read off of three of these accumulators to set the speed if I could. We can actually. Okay, so speed. Stardust 1, that's the one we're on. Stardust 2. Stardust 3. Number 4. 5. We're just copy pasting the wires and uh, speed signal settings. So it'll attempt to go 400 when the accumulators are fully charged. And if they drop down enough, it'll actually slow down, but realistically, that's usually not going to happen. Uh, number six. And what should be number seven. Whoops. Cool. So that should mean we don't have to click engage anymore for those ships. 
Let's confirm that they're all in motion. Uh, number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Beautiful. Okay. So all of a sudden we have quite a lot of Naquitite on its way back. Uh, this is like 15,000 and then some for each ship. And we've got one, two, three, four ships all close to each other here. Where is... Oh, that's right. We're going to Brunus. So that's like a bit more than 60,000 Naquitite. All of it's going to arrive at Narvis in about 15 minutes. Uh, and with our current productivity bonuses... Four Naquitite becomes one crushed. One crushed becomes one washed. Two washed becomes one Naquium powder. And ten becomes one ingot. But that's with like plus 56% or plus 42% productivity at every step. Pretty hard to calculate, actually. We can... Uh, we've got pretty good ratios here, so we can look at how much uh, Naquium goes in and how much comes out. Let's just check all the ratios are actually that close. Water, don't care. Yeah, the ratios are really, really close. So let's say 24.6 Naquitite becomes almost 1... Naquim Ingot. And we've got 60,000. So that that's only 2,500 ingots, approximately, that those four ships full of Naquitite coming back represent. That kind of stings, to be honest. Uh, we're going to keep spamming ships, and if we reach the point of saturation here, we're just going to build another mine. In fact, I'll probably build... Uh, I see no reason why I shouldn't build another mine in Stardust. This is where all the Naquitite is. And we can just have the exact same clamp ID. We don't need to change the drop-off station at Nalvis. That's going to be pretty effective, actually. Hey, Noxyway Gaming. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. In fact... If I really wanted to get ahead of things, I could, I could drop by Stardust right now and start building. But it wouldn't be protected by media point defenses. I can definitely go ahead and design it. The only question is where the best spot is. And I think it probably has to be this 15 million up here. Uh, that one's 10 million, but I think this is maybe a bit smaller, if not about the same size, for our max throughput. Auto save. Actually, might be a good time to take a little break. Have you solved the Stargate? No, I have not. What's on stream? Let me just double check the URL. Had to force that yesterday. That can get a mute. Okay. Are we auto-saved still? Yep. Alright. I'm going to take a short break. Uh, 30 seconds, and we're going to start some words on stream. 
and I'll be back in a few minutes. Take care.
Okay. Let's continue, shall we? Uh, right as soon as this words level ends, I guess. Oh. Off with the autopilot. And off with the display. Alright then. Uh, we haven't gone as far as I thought we would have by now. Oh yeah, I was looking at Stardust. I almost forgot about this, uh... We've got another 11 mines right here, actually. It would appear we're a long way off. Um... Needing a second location. We need more ships, mostly. But... Just doing a rough plan. I think we're going to get about the same throughput from this mine up here as we have with this one. So basically we're just in... We're still in the more faster stage with Nacrotite. Keep making ships. Keep adding... Well, we're not going to be adding mines very often, but mostly we need to spam a lot of ships to get a decent throughput for it. So this one actually will be number eight. Uh, what? Yeah, this one's number eight. And we can put the plan down as soon as the bots have placed the floors. Oh my goodness. That's just teasing. That, that is just rude. How could you? It's going to take them a minute. Ten minutes till we hit our destination. Uh, I should probably empty my chest, uh, empty my inventory somewhat. I guess keeping this in... Logistics trash isn't too bad. As long as we have systems in place to bring everything back to where it needs to be. Hopefully we won't be needing this again. In fact, I should probably check. Uh, I'm confident all of the Stardust ships are okay with that. Wasn't it one of the Stardust ships that had too much water? I did put a limiter on this. Water has to be less than... 24,500 in the one tank. I guess we could bump it down to 24,000. I don't think that's particularly risky. How many modules have we been making lately? Not a whole lot. Uh, not for 1.5 hours have we made productivity sixes, which probably just traces back to the plastic issue. We still don't have Holmium plate here. Uh, we've got our block making Holmium powder as quickly as possible. I think this is enough throughput for our base as it is, but it's playing catch up now. Um, so how much hol Holmium powder is this? 128 per second. And... That is... 12.8 ingots per second, not counting productivity bonus of 40%. Um, uh, 
about 18 holmium ingots per second. I think that is probably enough, but it's been it's been behind for a while. So we've got a whole lot of catching up to do. If I had the modules to spare, I would make another block like this, but I don't really want to be... I guess we're saturated with Holmium itself. It's going to cost us more plastic, more petroleum and everything as well. Let's see, one plastic makes... Uh, 14 cadian iron beads. And half a cadmium iron bead makes one holmium powder. Or oh, no, one cadmium iron beam bead makes one holmium powder. And we need about a hundred and twenty-eight per second. So. So it's like 12 point something plastic per second. That's really not that much. It's going to be worse if we build another block like this with lower tier modules. Uh, but, I mean, we can see it on the belt here. The overall throughput of the plastic here is really quite low. So I think we probably should make another block like this. Did I end up pumping water in? Uh, I did. This isn't one of those ones where we have to recycle water, so we have to keep the... Uh, keep the water not saturated. But the overall rate of consumption of water I think is relatively high. Uh, 700 per second, that's actually not that bad. But yeah, where do I want to build this is the question. This thing produces water, right? Or was it the other one? No, this net consumes water. I think it is barrel? Yeah, barrel net produces water very slowly. Why is this one busted? No beryllium hydroxide. Oh, because there's no barrel here. Well, that answers that question. Are we actually having trouble with barrel as well? I don't see any beryllium here. Uh, it would be in the form of ingots. No beryllium. No beryllium. 11k beryllium. So it's not all is lost. No beryllium. No beryllium. That's actually pretty bad though. Uh, when I think all of our beryllium actually is coming from Morpheus. Let's see. Is there a problem? It seems to be in motion. Do we have power? We don't have power. Uh, how did this happen? There's no beam here. What? You're joking. Uh, this is aimed at Morpheus, this is aimed at Black Mirror, Sanj and Sanj. Oh no. Uh, we probably don't even need to recharge the ships when they come here. Is this going to receive 
energy. Uh, not a whole lot. This one's aimed at sand. And this one's also aimed at sand. Oh no, I think I forgot that this one was supposed to be aimed at the power plant uh, at Morpheus. Also, I'm not sure why... Oh, this is switched off even. Even better. Okay, cool. Um, whoops. We're gonna point this one at the ship. This is the one that's only got one injector on it. Judging by the temperature here, it's really not necessary, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, and this one, which no longer needs to be heating up the power plant on Sanj as quickly as possible, uh, can be pointed back at Morpheus. It doesn't seem to be losing heat. Uh, I think. Yeah, no, it seems stable. Bitrate? Uh-oh. What's our bitrate? It looks fine at the moment. Did we get a dip rate? Alright, so finally this thing is warming up again. So we've been running our sole source of barrel on like 50% power for ages. Is there any way to read the temperature from beam receiver in logistics for the ship? Uh, like with circuit power, uh, circuit network stuff? No, not directly. Um, just like with a nuclear plant, the best you can do is read the contents of a storage tank for steam, or maybe accumulator charge, something like that. Can you control the target with signals? Uh, no you can't, but that would be cool. Ragathian, welcome, welcome. I hope, hope you're doing well, good to see you again. And welcome Felka and Vlad also. Hope you're doing well also. Alright, thanks, no worries. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff where you can't read it directly, but there's a way around it. Like, for example, detecting enemies. I don't know if we've still got any of our old defenses here. Yeah, we kind of do. Mm, I think we've... Yeah, so here we have an accumulator linked to a big electric pole. The entire... The entire network here, it, it's on a power switch. It's not normally connected. Uh, so it's on its own little electrical network. And then we have a couple of laser turrets supported by just a couple of solar panels and an accumulator. If that accumulator charge drops, uh, like more than it does during the night, we know that there's biters. Or when our inserter puts ammo into the gun turret, we can assume there's biters as well. Um, but yeah, we can't like directly detect biters. With all those bots running around the multi-production area, bitrate really dipped for a while. Multi-production area bitrate. Oh, you mean in that area bitrate dropped. Because there's a lot of stuff. We've got 6k uh, consistently, it looks like. It might be on your end, I don't know. Do you mean like this? Uh, I saw a 5.2k for a second there. Maybe. It seems to be consistent. Yeah, we're getting over 6,000. It might compress it more, perhaps, because there's so much to see. 
that could be the issue. Lots of different looking things in motion. Um, so what's next? We've got our ships in motion, that's cool. Uh, we continue to spam new ships. And unfortunately, we should have had a lot more Naquitite by now, but all of these ships, uh, all of these ships just didn't have a speed signal. For some reason you have to give the console a speed signal or it won't automatically take off. Or maybe if you fill something in here instead, it'll automatically take off. But that reminds me, I want to update this blueprint with those wires and make sure we don't make the same mistake with this one. Oh. Nice to see the temperature rise so quickly, but it does have to get significantly over 5k before it's safe for, it, for us to send it out. Also good if we have antimatter in the fuel tanks. That's definitely something. Ice production is still going strong. Oh, we're actually getting close to saturated here. That's fantastic. Uh, so that strongly implies we've got significantly more ice production than we need. I'm going to switch off the old ice production block. Um, we'll just stop requesting cryonite rod and sulfuric acid. And if we find we don't have any ice trouble uh, for quite a while... I kind of want to bump up the priority on this one. Yeah, I, I, I want these products taken away first. So if we get this thing exhausted of resources and find we don't have any ice issues for a long time and check and find this one's totally saturated, uh, we know we can deconstruct that old one. So ETA, five minutes. Sea of Sorrows, that sounds safe. How much Naquitite are we making lately? Actually, I'm only looking for plate and ingot. Uh, that is a spike and a half. But yeah, we have actually been making it for a little while. I think we just ran out, though. Is it worth sending it to orbit yet? Not really. As long as we can keep making spaceships, um, I'm not too concerned about that. And for everything else, we need ludicrous amounts to really need, uh, move the needle. We need 2,000 Deep Space Science Pack 1. What? Oh. Um... Could you... Could you go over here, please? There we go. That should sort that out. How's our new ship looking? 2,000 degrees almost? Already? 
It takes about the same time to fill the antimatter as it does to heat this thing up. Uh, water, though, might be a problem at this point. Where's our ice? Um, we've got it. Oh, we've definitely got the water here. So what's the problem? Did we stop requesting water for some reason? No? Do we not have enough trains? I'm sure we do. Yeah, there's a fluid... There's a long fluid train just sitting here right now. Um... That's a little bit odd. Let's bump up the priority on this one. Make sure it's not as simple as that. Uh, we could definitely increase that. I'm pretty sure we're already well below 20,000, though. We're not going to need light oil here again. That was for the battleship. The flamethrowers. Why are we not delivering this water? And what is wrong with this train? What? Really? That should not be a regular rail signal. Wrong remote. Uh, how did this get swapped? If I can't do it deliberately, then how does it happen by accident? Oh my goodness. Okay. This should be a regular rail signal. You can go back to trash drop-off. All the more reason not to use regular signals. When there's a train stop, uh, the trains will stop in a block with a train stop, if they're going to the train stop. Even if it's just... non-chain... even if there's only chain signals present. Are we getting our water delivered yet? We are not. Confused LTN screaming? Uh, that's really weird, actually. We haven't had a problem with this before. It's not some... I, d I didn't change the signal type, so that's not the problem. Are all of our fluid wagons in motion now? Nope. We've got two of them spare right here. Very confused. Three minutes and a half till our destination. Uh, what else were we building? I may as well go to the trouble of patching these cannons while we wait for that water to see if it's working. Are you out of water? No. We've got... Uh, from back when we decided we had to use barrels, oddly enough, uh, we've got ice here that goes into water, that goes into cosmic water. We added a little something here. Oh! I think I think we found the problem. Yep. I think that was it. Because I added this when I knew that this was running out. But those wires don't actually connect to the LTN train stop. Whoops. And there it is. That did not take long at all. Uh, 
and there goes some more antimatter. Well, we should get the water that we need. This is 100k, so we'll definitely get the water that we need here. Um, I'm going to drop this one to 24k as well, targeting uh, this container. Because we had that one ship that was slightly too full. Cool. Um, so I wanted to go to our oil outposts. Uh, crude oil, that is. This one we're not on yet. And we're going to change it to... Green on the right and red on the left. And that's going to be aimed at our new block. Uh, I think I've messed that up, actually. And this one goes here. Okay, uh, we need to change this to Nalva's Core Fragment Oil Processing, and get rid of the green wire connection on the left. And I can tell from the green light that it's already set to the same setting. Core Fragment Crude Oil has to be greater than zero. And that way we can skip the train trip for these ones. Uh, we've got mores we already updated, I think. Yes. Alessandro, check. Uh, Palto and Gogira is Vulcanite. Rose is Vitamelange. I think that's actually all of them. We've got a lot of crude oil... We've got like two untapped crude oil core fragment moons here. But I think it would be easier to pick it up with it. Whoops. I think it would be easier to pick it up with a spaceship, especially considering how small these are. We'll see. Uh, is our plastic looking a bit better, perhaps? We have no petroleum here. I'm going to go ahead and guess that each one of these does not have a trainload of plastic. It does not. So we still need more crude uh, petroleum. We might have enough by now to be maybe bottlenecking on crude. I don't think so. Well, these ones switched off, actually. But I think we actually just need more trains to keep up with this very high throughput couple of stations. Um, one, two, three... I'm almost tempted to pretend there's more crude oil here than there actually is, just so that it'll it'll schedule more trains. Because it's quite far away. Oh, there's a lot of traffic over here. That's suboptimal. We could maybe have the trains go through here as well. So many of them are sitting idle here, though. Hmm. 80 seconds to Shinzo. 
We've also got to visit Hedone. 8,000 radius Holmanite, hardly any biters. This is pretty far away, though. Also, the only reason we're having any trouble with Holmanites... But no, no, it wasn't Holmanite, it was Beryl. Uh, is because I busted the power plant by forgetting to point the beam back at it. But it's working now. Also, Spadges, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's get our scaffolding spiders to deconstruct some more of the old base. There's not too many... They've got a lot of capacity, and there's not that many giant containers left. It shouldn't take... Well... Okay, there's still quite a lot of stuff up here. But it shouldn't take that long to remove all the old stuff. Five point two K temperature. Quite a lot of antimatter, but we can definitely wait for some more. It's down to four hundred and fifty per second that it's pumping it in here though. Maybe I should go to the trouble of... Nah, I, I, would, I, I would rather get to like 7k to make sure we've got plenty of heat here. It takes about the same time to get lots of antimatter stream. Not much... there's not that much point adding pipe around this side. Uh, so this in the Sin Eater? Okay. Uh, this one is going to be Stardust number... I was going to say... I think 8 was the last one. Did I forget to name it? Uh, let's see. Alvis. Do we see a default name ship somewhere? I don't think so. We can quickly scroll through here. I don't see any default names. Oh, that's right, because we accidentally skipped one. I think that's why. Okay. Stardust, this will be number eight. And we'll give it a push in the not too distant future. And here we are. Shinzo has a hundred percent biter threat. That's a little bit spooky. I think that's the pyramid down there. They're not too close to it. We should be able to dip in and out. All right, so it, that is so dark. Uh, let's not land on the same side as the biters. How about up here instead? Make sure we've got some lasers to greet our friends. And we get another speed module. Once I get back to Nalvis, I should collect up all of the productivity modules that we've got spare. 
the t oh, it's an efficiency actually. The tier nines that we've collected, that is. And put them into the first step of the Nacrotite production. Let's step out for a side, uh, outside for a second so the janitor can do their thing. Thank you, janitor. Give that a little screenshot. Get back on the ship before it's destroyed. And we are gone. Okay, just gonna grab that. And what was that planet called? Shinzo. Throw that into the SE Mysteries uh, channel on the Discord. Whoops. Why is... Where did I save that to? Oh, I had to click one more thing. Okay. Shinzo. And let's not forget to delete surface so that the save doesn't get bigger and bigger and bigger. And let's head over to Hedon. I'm pretty sure we've got plenty of fuel. Yeah, we're fine. He don't. And we'll be there in probably a minute. Alban also has a mysterious structure. Radius 9,000. This is 8,000 as well. Uh, I th think we can... Well, you know what? Worst case, we have everything we need here to use antimatter canisters to refuel. So, I'm pretty confident we've got enough fuel to take everything from Brunus back to Calidus on this trip. Uh, and if we really have to, we'll we'll just have to <laughs> refuel ourselves like we did with the rescue missions. It's fine. Nothing bad can happen. Oh, here we go. I haven't actually seen one of these in action, just fully automated, with our new ships dropping off. So as soon as it has... it's got the sulfuric acid, it's got the water, it does not have the antimatter fuel yet. It's got all the miscellaneous stuff that it's looking for. And also it needs to be out of Naquatite or it's going to take off. Hey Shack Cat, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. We actually need to wait for a train to get here just to unload the, uh, the Naquatite. If, if we ever get, like, two ships waiting at the same time, which we definitely will very soon, because we had, like, several of them coming at the same time earlier, uh, that's gonna be a little bit of a problem. It's gonna slow things down, so... Let's get that one Spider-Tron. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? What? Oh, there we go. Uh, let's get you to add... Some more... Storage chests? Uh, not storage, but requester chests. 
We need them to be requested chests so that uh, they don't... It's waiting for the ship to take off. We need requested chests so that they don't get counted in read logistic network contents. What does the message mean when a cargo rocket is knocked off course? Uh, it means that it crashed badly. Uh, it didn't land where it was supposed to. Uh, you lose a lot of the uh, resources that it was delivering, and you get uh, you get various junk strewn about the place. Lots of scrap to pick up. If it's in a robot network, uh, it'll automatically mark that stuff to be picked up. Uh, otherwise, you might need something like this deconstruction planner with way too many identical-looking destroyed cargo rocket uh, thingamajigs that we needed to add to this deconstruction planner just for that to work. Missing a blue chest top left center. Yeah, it's because the shields are active here. Um... As soon as the ship takes off, uh, the bots are going to be able to place that. That is annoying. Yeah, I can toggle this shield off, but the ship could take off as soon as I do that. I, I would rather just leave it. So we're waiting on a little bit of ice. Actually, we've already got it. But the bots are doing their thing again. Well, not, it's not the bot's fault, it's the robot network reports negatives for stuff that the bots are moving around. But yeah, the only thing we're waiting on is pumping in antimatter just that little bit faster. Uh, we're pretty much full though. 49,700. Oh, that is... Yeah, we don't need to wait for that much. And go. And t Oh, wow, okay. It got replaced immediately, but the bots in that moment uh, placed the requester chests. So that works. I meant the crashing rockets is annoying. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of a few reasons that cargo rockets aren't my favorite. Although, at a really long distance, uh, it takes a lot of ships to keep up with a decent throughput from a mine. And even when we've got these six antimatter engines and as many chests as possible, uh, and we're going maximum speed is over 200, uh... It still takes quite a few ships to keep up with, for example, uh, what? This is actually 30 Naquatite per second. That's considerably more than I was expecting. Uh, Oblung Lobolata gives us like 12 per second. Are you okay? Why was this switched off? I thought there was another ship that had that combinator setting somewhere, but there it is. As long as you have facilities for dealing with crashed rockets, it's not much of a problem anymore. Yeah, but it's a whole... It's like several little logistical headaches all brought together. Uh, I like... I just like spaceships better. Delivery cannons to a lesser extent. You still have to bring a whole lot of resources together to make the delivery cannon capsules on the other end. Uh, so we're going to Hedone. There's hardly any biters. I need to look at carrying on with this mod, but the beginning of Factorio... Yeah, the start of this mod was like 
a bit extra slow as well, so I would definitely recommend. Uh, from what I understand, if you change the settings for like ore richness and things like that, uh, it all just if it, it only affects Nalvis. So it's really just making like if you're an experienced player, it's really only making your start faster or slower. So I'd probably just crank up the uh, resource availability for that. I may or may not have cheated my way through by turning on SE once I had a few things up and running. Fair enough. And we get a productivity. Nice. Let's step outside for the janitor. Thank the janitor. And grab a screenshot. Away we go. Just couldn't get myself to slog through the start again. Yeah, understandable. Absolutely. He don't. H e d o n e was it? And throw that in the Discord. Cool. Let's not forget to delete surface, otherwise our save gets longer. And now we're heading for Albin. Let's look at our fuel. Oh, it's nowhere near as bad as I thought. I don't think we're even going to come close. Get a blueprint book for vanilla speedruns? Yeah. I was actually thinking about trying... Like, not seriously, not try hard or anything, but do a little bit of speedrun practice just for the sake of being able to get through the early parts of the game quickly. Uh, there's no other... Yeah, no, that's the last one in this system. I don't think we're going to go up here. Maybe if the planets are small. Uh, radius is 4,500. It's not that bad. And that's the only one. Hmm. And this one actually has no planets. Allegedly. It has literally nothing. It's just a star. Uh, what about if we did some zone discovery? I wonder what we have yet to find still. Cronus? Error? Just how many of these do we have to research before we've found everything, I wonder? We're at number 130. Uh, how's it spelled? C-H-R-O? Oh, that's spaceships only. Cronus. Uh, no mysterious structure. Uh, what's the delta V from now versus what I want to know? Relatively close. Barrel. Big radius, uh, not too many biters. We could go there for barrel if we ever have throughput issues with it. Next was Hera. Uh, Cryonite, really small, pretty boring. Nothing of interest there. Aurus? O-U-R-U-S. Iron ore? Small moon? Pretty f kind of far away. No mysterious structure or anything. Are we there yet? 36 seconds. Uh, Bernadette. Vulcanite. Decent radius. Fairly close. 
Might be worth a look. And then we've got per Perodome. Iron, really small, somewhat far, waterless, not interested. What's next? Nikara. Nikara. Copper, decent size, really decent size, kind of far away though. I don't think we're going there. Uh, and last is Vexo. Uh, I can, I, I can see pretty much instantly that that's not going to be interesting. Really small, pretty far away. Uh, Cryonite is really easy. Not too excited about that one. Factorio Prints has blueprint book from two years ago, so it might be a bit out of date. This mod changes a few things anyway. Yeah, inserters and a couple of intermediate products were the first thing uh, that we really run into. Well, it's really only the first half of inserters, but it is a significant departure from the vanilla builds. We have arrived. There are zero biters on this planet. And there's our mysterious structure. Let's go say hello. Does like some audible bombardment exist in SE so you can just annihilate all the biters on a planet? Yeah, there's a few methods. Uh, mostly... Well, the one that my favorite, as long as there's not too big of a planet to clear, uh, is using energy beaming. There's actually a glaive mode that burns them, and it can auto-target them. So that just takes energy and time, and nothing else. There's also... Uh, where is it? A weapon delivery cannon. It's rather expensive, but it can shell enemies from anywhere within the solar system. Although it does miss sometimes, so if you have your own uh, structures or something, it will sometimes destroy them. Uh, so watch out for that. Let's launch. And... Screenshot. This is Albin. Whoops. A L B A N was it? Yes, it was. Did we delete all those surfaces? Yes, we did. Uh, how much fuel do we have? A little un a little bit less than half. But up here we've only got one planet to visit, and it's... Oh! Well, would you look at... No, wait, it was only this one, wasn't it? Yeah. Ragus. R-A-E, guess. Uh, I think it was the system up here that had nothing, but we just did a bunch of scanning. And still nothing. Okay. Yeah, I think we might even still have this block right here. This was for bombarding. This used a ridiculous amount of resources uh, to get the job done, but it did eventually clear uh, some of our planets of biters. It took lots and lots and lots, and I do mean lots, of... Why is that taking so long? Uh, of, I want to say beams, what are they called again? 
uh, girders, heavy girders. Because each shot, unless you're using nukes instead, and that's also expensive, uh, 50 heavy girders, rocket control unit, 10 explosives, and a weapon delivery capsule. The weapon delivery capsule is another 50 explosives, 10 heat shield, 10 LDS, 20 holmium cable, 10 iridium plate. Uh, it's not cheap. It's, pr it's something that I would probably skip on a subsequent playthrough. Uh, but I'd have to see when I actually get to that tech level and wanting this or that resource that the biters are stopping me from getting. How's our new ship looking? Pretty good, actually. Oh yeah, it's ready to go. Alright, off you go to Stardust. And we'll get started on the next one. Personally, I'd rather fly around with jetpack nuking everything. Yeah, that's fun, but the scale of clearing out a whole planet, uh, or especially multiple planets, it does add up. These feel just so incredibly slow now that we've got the antimatter. I mean, they are, they're ion engines. So where, let, let's check, Stardust, all of our, you're waiting at Nalvis, is anything busted here, doesn't look like it, we're waiting on antimatter stream to be pumped in, it's down to 86 per second on each side, maybe I should lower this again. Uh, what are we looking at here? 49,000... Let's go 49,200. Anything else? Nope. As long as it's, like, way more than enough to get there and back. And we refill it relatively quickly. Um, that's all I'm particularly concerned about with this. We don't want to be holding up our ships with squeezing in another two antimatter stream per second. Stardust. Number one is in motion, two is in motion, three is here, four is in motion... Uh, this one looks like it's in motion, but I don't see... I see lasers happening, but not engines. What's up with that? Let's go to six. Six is waiting at Stardust. So seven is at Stardust. That's fine. And eight is in motion. Okay, what is five doing? It's got heat. It's got water. Is it over full on water? Yeah. Well, there's your problem. I I'm not surprised, considering it happened to one of our other ships. That's why I reduced the amount of water we try to put into each storage... Uh, the one storage tank to... Uh, 24,000. So it was... Oh, that's why... That's why we found it, like, here, the other ship. Uh, because it has solar panels. And it gets a certain distance from the sun. The solar panel uh, strength drops. And it gets slower and slower 
until it starts to really rely on the turbine generators. Uh, and then we've got basically no power, so it's not moving anymore. Okay. I'll keep checking on each of them uh, every once in a while until we can be confident that they are always in motion. But considering we've got one at Nalvis, uh, we, we had like two at Nalvis and two at Stardust, uh, we should maybe be approaching saturation where we actually need to make another uh, Naquim, Naquitite mine in order to get more throughput. And I think, what was it, 30 per second? That we can get from Stardust already? Yeah, 29 per second. Uh, I think our build on Nalvis can't actually keep up with that yet. Cool. That's going to be a good problem to have. It's going to be a very good problem to have. I guess I need to... I need to redesign this block um, because the original design didn't have room for ingots and plate because we were going to do it in the uh, Omni smelters until I realized, oh, um, every bit of Naquitite is precious. I do not want any switching of uh, recipes at all, I'm losing the bonus productivity. So I guess we can do that now-ish. Uh, where are our spiders? They should probably go back to the mole first. They're looking a bit um, over full. How many prod modules do we have? Zero. Kind of expected that. But what about up here? Also zero? What? I think we had exactly 36 over here before. That is a bit concerning. There's 480 here. Uh, what? Why do we have... I don't need this circuitry here anymore. I guess I should get rid of the old, like, our first shuttle, but that's a piece of history right there. We are requesting productivity modules to be delivered here. Oh, I think I... I think I see the problem... Alright, I'm going to change this back to Request Stack Threshold. And I'm pretty sure we're requesting at least a stack of everything in this block. Certain things are really low volume, so I changed that to like Request Threshold 1. But... I mean, yeah, this thing... This thing stacks to 50, even though we need hardly any of them. This is 5, that's fine. But yeah, we've got like three trains bringing two items at a time each, and I suspect that's why we haven't, they haven't gotten around to delivering productivity modules. And this is actually what supplies our little module ship that goes back down to Nalvis. Look at that. Literally six spaceship floor being delivered. Can't you just copy an Omni smelter and lock it to 
an aquatite. Uh, I want the tier 6. Well, we don't need anywhere near that kind of numbers of smelters for an aquatite. Uh, but also, I want to put in the tier 6 modules and so on. We also don't need the circuitry that controls... Uh, that controls the Omni smelters for that. Uh, can I maybe cancel that one? Oh, too late. Oh, I remember this. I set it to stop picking up those modules from here. Uh, hmm. Can we just make sure we have, like... How many do we have right now? Can we just make sure we have, like, 200 of each in this block? Before we export the rest. That would probably help. Also, they should probably... Theoretically, they should be able to pick up from here and bring it to here, but... The mall is probably higher priority. Yeah, it is. Alright, where are we? Twelve and a half minutes until we get to... Alacrity. Or rather, Ragus. Um, yeah, so I don't actually have the modules. I mean, I do, but they're in an awkward spot. Hmm. Nah, I'm, I'm just going to get them delivered. There's 480 here. What do we got? Train coming to pick up modules. Fantastic. Get in there. Now that I've realized as well that I can... By not having a request threshold that's reachable... Uh, use a negative to pretend that we've got less... Uh, fewer productivity modules, for example, than we really have in this block, so that we reserve some. That could also solve the issue that we occasionally get, where a short train is trying to pick something up here that, um, while it's waiting for it, it gets given to a spider or something, and it ends up being like seven items short for something that tends to come through pretty slowly. So we end up with one short LTN train sitting here for ages, blocking the other ones. If I, uh, with our incredibly high default provide and request threshold that's effectively just not there, uh, if I set some negatives here for those items, that should resolve that issue as well. Uh, I guess that is a relatively large number of things to pick up for one little stack inserter. But it's because we haven't been picking this stuff up for a while. Uh, so this thing, once it has 250 prods, is going to make a trip down to... Uh, the mall down here. One, two... Whoops. We've got seven productivity nines that we could... Make that eight uh, that we could use back here. 
I do have a couple that I threw into one of the uh, into the mine at Stardust. It was literally just one, actually. This one has 166% productivity bonus instead of 160. But the earlier in the production chain we do the productivity bonus, the better it's going to be. We certainly can't afford to saturate all the mines, though. Um, so I guess we would need 12 to make this work. I could also put some better speed modules in here. Alright, so modules should be... Oh, they're still being loaded. Oh, that was the last train. There they are. Oh, and there's our next ship. That is going to be number nine. And the really nice thing about this asteroid field is if we do get to the point of the mine not being able to keep up with the ships, we can just make another mine in the same, uh, on the same surface. Cool. We don't need to touch that again until we're launching. Here come the modules. Why are there so many radar construction pylons? Oh, I think I know why. Because we need some stuff. Yeah, quantum processes. Okay. Should we do some more scanning? I want to get to the point where we've discovered, like, every location. Is that even possible? Mitrion. Uh, we got Holmanite, moderate distance, hardly any biters, pretty small. Then we've got Dafty. Another Holmanite one, really small moon. Kind of far away. Melion. Stone. Uh, waterless, small, really far away. Indigo. Uh, what have we got? Kind of far, waterless, lots of biters, iron ore, small moon. I could maybe see myself clearing that to get the iron core fragments. Probably not. I'm just going to put that slightly above. Yes, we've seen it. Zaphis? Iron ore. That is maybe the smallest radius I've seen. Uh, and it's a little bit far away. Chiron, uh, Cryonite, good radius, not that far. Oh, it's in the Hankerous system, we've already been there. That makes it a little bit easier to set up. So, if we ever need more Cryonite, maybe that one. And then, Jarrett. Jeroen. Uranium. I don't think we're going to need that anytime soon. Cool. Oh. I reckon you will complete your SE run by part 200. I wish I could say that with confidence. What are we even up to now? 167. I would imagine so. But that said, it's taken longer than I thought it would to get 
uh, a functional amount of naquitite for science. Uh, particularly hitting a roadblock at trying to get deep space science and arcosphere collection. Um, what do we got here? We're still nowhere near launching these things. Good grief. Um, but yeah, I think we might be at the point... We're probably at the point where this is going to run 24-7. So we, we actually need to do a new block for that. This is why we're getting these productivity modules together that we've sent down to Nalvis. Uh, I think it already went back. Module box. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, so it gave all of the productivity modules to the spiders just now. So hopefully we've got everything we need to build a nice new Naquium processing block. Uh, we don't need those old power poles, actually. What's holding back deep space science? Uh, something needs to be super scaled. Yeah, it's Naquatite. That's what we've been doing. So the reason I keep building spaceship after spaceship after spaceship for our new design, uh, this is using antimatter. I think it's the top tier engine in the game. Um, and this is the biggest, fastest ship that we can make. Uh, th this is probably going to be maybe our last hauler design for this playthrough. It has a top speed of 214.38. Uh, the asteroids do not slow it down at all. Uh, it gets all of its power from energy beaming. So we don't have to worry about it running out of nuclear fuel or antimatter fuel, like antimatter canisters or something like that. And we don't need chests and inserters managing uh, fuel input and output. We do have one chest that's for various utility things just to keep the outpost that it's going to uh, functional. But other than that, we've got 20, sorry, 33 chests that it comes back with full of Naquatite. Um, our best Naquatite mine is here at Stardust. It's just got considerably more Naquatite than other places that we've been to. You have to go to one of these uh, interstellar asteroid fields to get Naquatite. There's no Naquium core fragments or anything like that. So this right here is... Uh, has more than doubled our Naquatite throughput. Um, and I think we might be getting close to the point... We might actually have enough spaceships already to stop bottlenecking on the ships themselves, and we're now bottlenecking on the mines. And if that's the case, and we still want more, uh, luckily we can just build another outpost on the same surface. I was eyeing up uh, this one over here. We should get about the same throughput again from that. We will need to build another uh, another energy beam transmitter at Hankerus. We'll need some more power for that uh, to keep the outpost powered. Unless we want to run... Unless we want to run pylons all the way up here, not to mention uh, point defenses to protect them. I don't know that I've ever actually seen an asteroid land out here, but I'm pretty sure I neglected this and then something got hit at one of the suns. So I'm pretty sure this is necessary. Anyway, uh, we can basically more or less duplicate this outpost here, but on the same surface. And the nice thing about that is we won't need to change anything about our spaceships. 
to take advantage of that. We can just add more. Uh, as long as this parking spot is occupied and the other one isn't, when a ship is, uh, gets here, it's going to park at the other spot. Bad mode, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Couldn't you do cargo rockets for the Naquitite mines as a special case to reduce the amount of ships you need to deal with? Um, yeah. I'm, I mean, we've already done all of the logistics for this, though. These ships are pretty fast. Also, hmm. I was going to say, when we get an upgrade that lets us have more hull integrity, we could just add more chests to this. Uh, it would probably increase the overall throughput if we add more chests, but not more engines. Except, if we have... Uh, since we're using the set requests uh, with the logic for taking off on the outside... Unless we update all of these ships at the same time, um, it's probably better if we just have new ships that go to a different outpost. But yeah, we are getting there. Uh, compared to everything else, um, Naquatite is practically our only bottleneck for the things that we're trying to do right now, even though we do have sort of a Holmanite crisis at the moment. But I think we have the throughput, we're just catching up after not prioritizing plastic here enough. Because the actual Holmium, um, uh, Holmanite rather, has been piling up for ages. We've got like 55,000 of it here that can be reclaimed. Alright, let's see what we can do about a new build. Finally. I think... So, I, I, I did a complete build, but not this stuff, a while ago in editor extensions for Naquatite. But the problem with this is just the stack size of Naquium. It's only 10, and this is four belts of Naquium right here. So that's not terribly realistic. Uh, I think I calculated something like we would need a train to pull in with another load of Naquatite every 12 seconds uh, to keep this thing going at full speed. So that doesn't quite work out. But overall, like the shape of it, uh, that's all pretty good. I think we just want to trade a bunch of space taken up by our pulverizers and chemical plants uh, for some room to have industrial furnaces, and assembly machines at the bottom. So we're going to have... Uh, the actual throughput, even if we do an excellent job of this, for... well, everything, actually. Not just our desired products, is going to be pretty slow. So I think we'll have... Um, a station here for our two desired products, and a station here for our two uh, waste products, quote-unquote. Norse Finder, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The question is... Can I or should I... have... Where does the Vulcanite come in? It's only for the smelting. Hmm. So we need Vitalic Acid mixed with the first... with this product here. Uh, 
I think we're still going to go for mostly the same layout. Uh, how much water do we use? Hardly any. And also, some of it is output, uh, recycled. So we don't want this to be completely full. So, yeah, a train bringing in water is actually perfect for this. Um, what I might do for starters is copy this. We'll have a look at what kind of rate calculation we get. I want to double this if we can. One whole belt-ish of Nacotite. Um, actually, let's wait for the rest of those modules. Six of these would be 49 per second. And I remember playing around with the ratios quite a bit before getting something that I was somewhat okay with, with this thing. Snow in Factorio, how does that work? Uh, it's one of the many mods uh, that come with space exploration. Uh, I think it's called Alien Biomes. Yeah, there it is, Alien Biomes. At least I think that's where the snow comes from. You could just add a constant combinator reducing the inventory count inside the ship to make the old stations work. Uh, yeah, and I would have to patch every single ship that doesn't have the new chests yet. That's exactly the kind of hassle I'm avoiding moving on to the uh, set request style of ship having all the logic on the outside. Literally the only circuit like stuff that we've got in the ship is a speed signal and anchor target. And controlling input of some bots into here. That's fine too. Why did we get this split stack? Whatever, it's fine. may have to take a look. This looks fun. Yeah, it's uh, it's an excellent mod. Absolutely. As the ships arrive on top, can you just provide it by belts? Yeah, some people use belts. I think belts might be... No, I would, I would hazard a guess that belts are more popular um, than using uh, logistic storage chests to get stuff in and out of the ships, especially if you have... Well, I guess that doesn't make much of a difference. Something that I would definitely use on a future playthrough is AAI containers. So you've got like big, I think, something like 6x6 containers, for example. Um, much more UPS friendly, having fewer containers, fewer inserters, and so on. And it's also just kind of neater. But... I wanted to stick with uh, as much of it possible being vanilla-ish, uh, if only a, a couple of reasons, but one of them is I wanted most of it to be recognizable uh, to a viewer that hasn't played space exploration. If we copy this over here... Does that actually just fit? Yeah, it does. The coolest thing is still trains driving into the spaceships, yeah. It's not... I think... I could be wrong. 
it doesn't seem the most efficient use of space, but it is cool. Uh, okay. So we've got... That's just for getting the water from up here. We're looking at more than one belt, I believe. 50 per second, let's call that. So that's actually five stacks of Nacrotite per second. Um... So each train load will last approximately 32 seconds. I could probably live with that, especially considering how short the train trip is going to be. Let's tentatively say we're going to do that. Um, how many of these do we need to support that? Our target is to consume 13.632 washed necrotite per second. Very, very slightly less than that. Let's call it 13.6. Uh, this is kind of a lot. 13.68. Okay, so we need 56 chemical plaques. Is that what this is? 32. Oh yeah, I think I remember from this build. It's like three columns of these to keep up with two of these. But then how are we going to fit furnaces and stuff? I would like to just consume like a belt or a little bit less, but then the ratio for this is going to be way more off. Maybe the chest merger mod? Yeah, that, uh, that is an option. Feels like a bit of a cheat, but you can do that. I mean, you decide what different kinds of difficulty to take into your playthrough. Um, Alright, I guess let's play with the ratios with the top part here. I want to go for a little bit less than a belt, so let's say we have five of these. We need to consume very nearly 16 crushed Nacrotite per second. Uh, six machines gives us a significant but small positive uh, rate for crushed Nacrotite. I prefer hard mode clearly uh, for some things. I mean, I've learned a lot uh, and done a lot of different things this playthrough with, like, complicated... Uh, train station outputs especially, and to a lesser extent inputs. And I think if I were to do another playthrough and have like, uh, you've probably seen some mods that make train input and output uh, for items, you know, involve like four giant entities uh, for four cargo wagons, and it then you have like loaders, so you don't have to worry about inserters or anything like that. Very, very easy. Um, but like, it's more UPS friendly, for example. And if I can say, like, quite confidently, I, I think I've proven that I've like solved this problem. You could hardly really call it a cheat, right? Uh, it's just sort of a. It's a problem I've already solved, and uh, a little bit of difficulty that I'm just opting out of for a future playthrough. Um, but yeah, another playthrough of SE will definitely involve some bigger containers, uh, some loaders probably, uh, stuff that makes this sort of thing a bit simpler and more UPS friendly. 
And maybe I was thinking um, shorter trains, smaller rail blocks, possibly. I do like the four cargo wagon trains, but SE is just is just big. Like really, really big. So how many of these were we looking at? Five? Let's say tentatively we're gonna go with five. Uh so we're looking at fifteen point nine nine crushed naquitite. If we want net positive for that, we have to limit ourselves to six of these. Five into six does not a clean direct insertion make. We're going to be quote unquote wasting 1.6 uh, crushed necrotite throughput per second. It'll, uh, that it's significantly far from zero also makes it a bit harder to. Um, get our estimate on how many machines that we need to support the next part. So if we if we make enough to consume like 20.4 washed nacrotite, we're not actually going to be getting that much. Wait, no, yes we are. I'm thinking of that a little bit backwards. If this was red... Oh, that makes it easy, actually. 20.448. Uh, we need to consume slightly less, if not exactly that. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, 85? Um, how about we make that a multiple of 4, perhaps? Wait, what? Wrong, wrong thing. 21 machines in a row. That's only 13. Uh, this is going to be surprisingly hard to fit. To say nothing of how are we going to get 5 machines going into 6... Uh, to work well. I guess we might have to add belts in between them. If we only need one belt of Naquitite, we can move this up significantly. We'll probably still do the water on the left. Maybe? Where does this actually line up? Let's put a train stop down. Maybe I could even put both of them on the north side. We don't need, like, double pumps to pick up the water. Uh, we could maybe do something like this. And... Can we perhaps... If a train has to come every 32 seconds... 44 necrotype per second. 160 times 10, 1600, 41. Uh, a train has to come every 39 seconds to keep up with this. So we can't go too light on the inserters. 5 to 6 shouldn't be an issue as long as you can make the layout in the middle special. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we don't actually have room for it. Well, we do have room for a chest there, but it's kind of awkward. With... Let's 
Something like this, maybe? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is going to be more than enough to saturate one belt. So then we've got extra room up here. Might make all the difference. We could do this a couple of ways. I could have belts coming down like so. Or we could also... That's going to all... That's going to put everything on the same side of the belt, if I do that. Yeah, we can't afford to... We might not save as much space doing this as I had in mind. Let's say it looked something like that. The scale to summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so it's going to take up about this much space as opposed to... Well, not even that. Uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure we can get a solid belt out of this if we change the way we unload it. Just use a balanced unloader circuit instead. Hurry up. There's always going to be a gap if we do it this way, but I think with the exact same amount of space we could get a full belt easily. And also keep it balanced. That's only saving one tile if that I don't think I want to do it this way. Alright, so something like this perhaps. Except... Uh, if we're consuming 41, we obviously need to use both sides of the belt. If we only have... Five inserters? We can still unload the trains quickly enough. Don't doubt. We can do that. And then this goes about here, maybe. Faster these machines individually. Eight point two per second. One stack inserter doesn't seem to have any trouble keeping up. Still saving at least two tiles? Yeah, we'll see how close it gets. Um... Five to six. I think we have to, like, merge and split it. Well, not split. Yeah, this is the... This is the part that's not going to look that satisfying, I think.
two, three, four. No, we'd have to output all of the... I don't think we're doing any direct insertion stuff here. We're just not... 3.198 per second. Bust inserter should be fine. What's our maximum rate for this? Only 13 per second. One machine can't support one machine, so we can't... We have to have the first machine at least be fed by the first two. Where's the middle? Kind of like this. And then... Down a little bit. Except... That doesn't actually... How about this? We could do a couple of long arms for this one. These two feed... These three, actually. That's kind of weird. But otherwise I have to have this loop back around. Oh, I know how we could save a bit of space with that, I think. We can have it loop back up here. And we should be able to use long arms. 3.4 per second. Um, this picks up three. Because it's only picking up three, it's pretty quick. It's not like a stack inserter picking up 12. 432 degrees per second. Uh, 1.2 rotations per second. Three times one point two is three point six. It might be cutting it close, but I think a long arm inserter with a stack size of three is going to be able to keep up with this. You'll unlock better modules, but not better inserters. Hmm. We unlock better prods that make it go slower, along with the modules that make it go faster. Also, I don't know if I'm going to bother turning everything into tier 9 in the end, because the climb from 3 to 6 is huge, and 6 to 9 is going to be even more ridiculous. It just requires such a vast amount. Alright, I don't hate this. Um, I wonder if we could also... No, we should have the water back here anyway, because we need to spit out water from down here. Alright, let's double check that ratio. Uh, what? Wait, what? I thought it was... F oh, no. Oh no. Oh, one of them's not under the beacon. That's probably what the reason. Yeah, there we go. Slightly positive on crushed necrotite. Okay. So then we would be needing 20.448 approximately washed necrotite to be consumed. With 85, we get to exactly 20.4. That's a lot. It also requires a whole belt of Vitalic Acid. 
but we're going to have like multiple lanes of this, so... There's no middle for this 4x4 four four wide area beacon, unfortunate. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to need that many furnaces, relatively. And certainly not much space given to Aquium Plate. But let's try and reserve a bit. We'll probably end up reducing this, maybe. Let's just build this out and see what kind of shape we're going to end up with. That's going to affect some of our decisions. That's too good of a fit not to try to make this work. To being a little bit weird. That looks kind of nice. Uh, so then we have washed nequitite and stone. How far down can this beacon go? Pretty far, actually. What's our rate from these? 20 plus 2, a little bit over half a belt. Well, either one of these uses less than half a belt, but they're probably going to come together first. I could move these out a little bit. And then we have a little bit of room in the middle. And then one item can go on one side and another on the other. And then we'd have to do it again. Or rather... No, that should be fine. So let's say stone goes on the near side and then stone goes away up here. Was it stone? Yeah, it's stone. Is this Naquium processing? Yes, it is. Uh, individually, the machines do like 3.8 per second. I was going to say that should be fine for a fast inserter, but with the two different resources, we'll see. Probably used a fast inserter up here, right? No, it's a stack inserter. All right, let's tr Oh, we're here. Let's anchor on Ragus. We do have some biters. Let's find the mysterious structure. What do you do with all the stone and sand from the off-planet resource processing? Uh, usually I just output it to another train station. Uh, and I make sure that train station has a very high priority for pickup. Looks like there's no biters in sight. Yeah, any kind of uh, side product, that's usually how I deal with it. Stack inserters save UPS if they're fast enough to go idle. Yeah. Hmm. 
But it's going to keep swapping from one resource to the other, so I don't think it's going to get to be idle that often. It can't pick up stone and washed naquitite in the same swing. Alright, step out for the gender, and now we can take a picture. What's this place called? Let's find out after our ship is not theoretically under threat by biters. Watch, it is Ragus. R-A-E-G-I-S. Okay. Let's crop that. Save as. Ragus. And throw that into the Discord. One of these days we'll crack the mystery. And I think there's nothing left uh, in this nick of the woods for us to explore. Alright, one more time. We'll do seven zone discoveries. And if we don't find something in that nearby star, we'll head back to Nalvis. Are you going for the secret ending? I'd like to find all the endings if I can. Pyramid of lag. Uh, I think part of it is because it's like generating when we go in there, right? Alright, uh, let's have a look. Um, I... Nope, there's still nothing there. Alright, let's head back to Nalvis Orbit. And we'll have a look at these planets we've just found, and so on. Jasbury. Holmium. Pretty small. Kind of far-ish. Uh, hardly any biters. Uh, let's bump that up very slightly. Hestia. Oil, probably don't care. It's in Hankerus, that's a bit of a distance. We've got other ways to get crude oil before we resort to that. Bay Aura? Fiaura. Coal. Hardly any radius. Kind of far away. Plato? Is oil decent size? Ooh, we have a ruin. Let's have a peek. What be this? We got a bunch of stone walls, gun turrets, I think. Uh, I can't quite... That's not a gun turret. That's a broken furnace. Old chest. Touch to capture. A lot of biters as well. That looks like it's supposed to be farmland. It it looks a little bit less convincing. It, it looks more convincing on the map than it does looking at it directly. Hmm. Is there... Doesn't look like a high-tech place. We can definitely check it out, though. Ooh, is that what I think it is? Why is there one Arcosphere, as far as we know? Uh, in this old ruin that looks pretty low-tech. Interesting. That is a furnace. 
That is an active furnace. Something does not add up here. Something is very strange in Plato. Have we been here before? No. So where is this? Sepi. It's like north of Nelvis. We are here right now. Heading back to Nelvis orbit. We're relatively low on fuel, so I'll head there some other time. Looks like Rimworld, yeah. Lost city of A Atlantis? Pretty good for Factorio textures, definitely. Looks like someone placed cave in map. Indeed. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh... And Jamort, not Steel Mage, welcome, welcome, this one. Vlad, thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well also. Alright, let's have another peek at... Wait, did I look at all of these yet? I didn't, we stopped at Plato. So what about Hakka? Oil, small-ish, well, pretty small actually. Pretty close. But I don't think I'm excited about that one. Olde Ran. Stone. Kind of big. Uh, not that far away. No biters. Uh, if we ever need stone, we might go there. And then... Zau Zauber. Uranium, moderate size, lots of biters, kind of far-ish. It's in Capellas. We've been there. We've got an outpost there. Okay. Uh, Nemo, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so I don't know if we're going to fit 85 of these. Um, let's say we go stone to the right, like we did up here. Oh, or we could put it another way, uh, washed nacritite to the left. That's our desired product. That belt is facing the wrong way. Okay, so we get almost half a belt of washed nacritite. Uh, we can very easily merge that with um, vitalic acid and feed that to our machines. I think I would like to start How much space do we actually need? Let's space this out more than we need to at first. That's a good layout. I'm going to copy that a little bit. In fact, probably a lot. And I can't flip it. Uh, one, two, three. If we really want to save a bit of space horizontally, we can do a zigzaggy input. But really, I just want to figure out how much room we're going to need. I should do a snap to grid relative for this. We're gonna run out of room. 
for the smelters at this rate. How many is this? 32? And we need 85. So like 2.6 times this. What is 85 over 3? 28. Kind of. What about over 4? How about we do... Can we do like 10 down 4 times? I don't know if it'll fit around the beacon. In fact, I'm sure it won't. Unless... We might just need more beacons. I'm sure we will need more beacons, but we'll see if we can make them fit well. Uh, let's say we just put that there for now. No, I'm pretty sure we can only have three columns like this. It might even... It will actually fit around one beacon. So if this were one tile to the right... What's a multiple of three that consumes about 20.4 washed naquitite? Uh, 81? 84? Yeah, 84. So 28 each. This is only 20. Uh, I don't think we can... Well, okay, if... If this is all of the Naquotype processing in the entire block, we can, we have more room on the other side, still. How can one understand how to make a Omni Smelter? Uh, there's, depending on how you're doing it, uh, there's it, a, a few problems. If you're doing vanilla, for example, like here I had to use crafting combinators because uh, it has to set a recipe but if we're not setting a recipe the first thing you have to figure out is controlling the inputs into a furnace um, so that for example you put in exactly five iron plate when you want to make steel no more no less um, I don't think we have an electric furnace here how about this Oops, okay. Um, let's put down an electric furnace. So if you're not worried about losing productivity bonuses when the recipe switches, uh, one way you can do it is have a chest here that we're going to read. We can use a filter inserter to limit what we put into the chest. And we can say uh, constant combinator here. We're going to connect the inserter, the stack inserter, the chest, and the constant combinator. And we can say set filters uh, whitelist. And we're going to have negative four iron plate. So, only if we have five or more iron plate is this thing going to get a positive signal for iron plate. And it's only going to get a positive signal for one thing at a time because it's a stack filter inserter. We can control how much we put in as well. 
very similarly. Uh, we're going to go stack size 1 here, and we're going to go set filters blacklist. So if we request a bunch of iron plate here, it's going to put in iron plate until we reach 5, and then and only then this thing's going to pick some up. It'll put in the next 5 as well, but that's fine. We can use this to control the limit for a bunch of different things at once. Uh, let's say we can go up to 12 iron ore, up to 12 uh, copper ore, and stone. We want exactly two, because two stone makes one stone brick. Um, so we don't want to put an odd number of stone uh, into the furnace. So once we have... I don't know if iron is going to come before stone or not. I think iron is being put in first. Oh, there we go. We're on stone now. And then maybe when we get to five iron, that takes precedent. You could have a control circuit somewhere um, that sends another signal to these... Uh, stack filter inserters. We could say steel storage is getting too full, so do not uh, do not put iron plate into the furnaces. I mean with crafting combinator, but for a miniature mall? Uh, doesn't make sense on how to wire it up. For a mole, you could take the recipe ingredients and feed it to a requester, but then you take the excess contents and put it on an active provider to clean out junk during switches. Yeah, we do some of that here, uh, although it's a little hard to see. How about the space mole? Um, so high throughput stuff, I put in these static requester chests up here. We put, like, one stack of all of these things that we put in very often. Uh, I should have set this to like 47 stone because the bots have a habit of oversupplying certain things. If we if we're getting close to running out of stacks in this chest that that will be important. Um, but for common items we can do this and then have like negative a million for those types of items that go to these set request uh, chests that we get from the recipe combinators. And there's that active provider chest. Um, when we switch recipes and we're not supposed to have certain things in here anymore, uh, we dump everything else. Um, as for choosing what recipe to use, uh, it's complicated. The basics of it is we have positive numbers of what we want on these constant combinators. Um, we have a negative of what we've actually got in the logistic network. Uh, with some caveats like don't give us a negative signal from this thing in the first place if bots are picking stuff up. We've also got some timers thrown in so it doesn't change recipe too often. Um, and after that, we just use anything greater than zero output anything. Uh, all this does is picks like the arbitrarily first signal out of all of the signals for input, and output's just one of them. Uh, and then we can go like... All, uh, this output subtracted from, well, I guess, oh yeah, th this is our initial input, this green one right here, and then we're subtracting the signal that this one chooses, so that goes over here, 
and we just repeat that over and over so that we have anything greater than zero output anything and then all of that input initial input minus the thing that we just chose it takes three combinators to make that happen so we start with a list of like nine different things here and then we've got eight things we're trying to make seven and so on I still haven't come up with my all-time favorite uh, system of prerequisites. Uh, we can definitely use, like, a decider combinator for each prerequisite rule, but that's going to add up pretty quickly. There's also another version I did, but um, that has different problems. How did you automate interplanetary supply? If I may ask, I'm having a hard time finding a good scalable solution. Uh, delivery cannons at first was the main thing. Can you treat it like a rail network except you use signal? Oh, oh, I see. Replying. Uh, yeah, and whenever you do an Omni Smelter, there's going to be a oh, well, in this case, lots and lots of decisions. Uh, basically, these are all... We start with a condition of just try to make everything. And then we have, like, if there's too much iron plate, stop trying to make iron plate. If there's no iron ore, stop trying to make iron plate. Uh, that's all that all of these are. Rules like that. Just phasing cannons out after 200 hours? That sounds like space exploration. Silent Storm, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 24 minutes till we're back to Nalvis. Um, let's take another crack at making this fit. So since we're not actually... What's the input rate for this? Very, very slow. Alright, so we can definitely use uh, long arm inserters here. Do we actually have enough prods to keep rate calculating this? You need something to tell you what you have at each location to make requests happen. Also with cannons you need one for every destination. Yeah, otherwise you can oversupply it. We've run out of prods. I don't suppose we've delivered more... We've got a whopping four productivity modules over here. Okay. That's not a whole lot. I'm carrying like 200... 250 myself, actually. So how many is this? Uh, 84? I think that's gonna work out pretty well actually 20.448 84 is 20.16 and we need a belt of vitalic acid split into half belts here um, we're gonna need another beacon down here somewhere regardless so don't have to worry about how far down this one is, I think. How about this? We're going to get beacon sickness, aren't we? What about this one? Does that happen to line up? Oh, it does. That's perfect, actually. And we can just underground belt this part. Uh, The water output... Oh, wait, no, we figured that out. That's good. 
Okay, so what's our output from all 84 of these? Uh, it's like half a belt, or slightly more. No, I think it's literally less than half a belt. Okay, so we definitely don't have to stress about that. This is kind of in the way. Did that happen to collide with our... It did. I'll worry about that when we're finalizing the design. I could definitely move all of this over a tile or two. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'll do that. Let's put this... about here. If I can move this over a bit, that seems fine. Especially since we don't have to worry about the water throughput. We're going to be very slowly net consuming it. I think we'll connect the water down here as well, perhaps. We'll see. But the main thing is... This is going to go here. And we're going to have the Vitalic Acid coming in this way. We need less than 40, right? Uh, less than 45. So we can just have one belt that just sort of splits, splits, splits for this part. The beacon's in kind of an awkward spot to do this belt, actually. Um, can we move this part down a bit? Probably. Wait, that's not... That's not quite right. We need to have room for this belt to come this way. So at least like that. Uh, that's not going to be a splitter this time. Um. What am I doing? That doesn't work. I don't think a underground's gonna reach like that. It will insert twice when there's nothing at the destination. Insert twice. Uh, they're gonna like block each other. So 
is a little awkward. No, I was gonna go... Why is this so difficult? Uh, it. I feel like this should be easy. Mostly because the beacon's kind of in the way right now. I'm just gonna move it out of the way until I figure this out and then we'll see. I think we just, I think I'm overthinking this and I just have to do it something like this. Um, and there isn't like a, there might not be a really clean, elegant way to do this part. I would prefer if this can go here and actually maybe this. That might be as good as it gets. And the beacon still fits. So we've got underground going this way. Uh, same thing again, sort of. Back one tile. So these two meet like so. That goes through there. These two meet like so. That goes through there. And yeah. I don't think it gets any neater than that. That's not too bad. Okay. So I'll have a belt of uh, Vitalic Acid coming in like so. We still need to get rid of our stone. What if I do it like this instead? And the stone can escape in whichever direction. I think in at least one iteration of this design, I was actually having the stone just go where the sand would as well. No, it's weaving its way all the way over here. Alright, let's not... So we've got 84 of these. That's going to give us 14.314 Naquim powder per second, uh, which we can consume with 12 furnaces. 13 if we want to consume every last part of it and have the last furnace stopping and starting. And have an odd number, so screw that. Uh, so we only need 12 industrial furnaces to support all of this. I don't want to put them down here. Uh, maybe more like this. Actually, I think... I think we should have room to just bring the outputs up like this. And just for a change, we could have the junk output on the left and the desired outputs on the right. And this way, we could easily output sand and stone down to here. Uh, 
What's our total rate from this? 84, 14, and 7. And then 2.5. Significantly less than one belt. So we could actually output all of the stone, sand, and uh, nacrium powder onto one belt heading towards the furnaces. Um, and then just filter off the nacrium powder from there. That could work. Let's try this. I'm sure there's a tile or two we're going to be able to save as well, but I'm not overly concerned about that just yet. Actually, this one instead of a uh, instead of a deconstruction planner on the left, we're gonna do aquium powder on the left, actually, rather than on the right. And then down here, we're gonna have sand and stone. I'm liking the way this one's shaping up, actually. Also, that split is probably unnecessary. We're going to get, like, two stone per second, and then... Uh, 14 times this. We're going to get, like, five items per second. I, I really don't think a splitter is needed for this part. Also, that's going to be on that side of the belt, that's going to be on that side of the belt. If we use a splitter instead, that's on the top side, that becomes the top side. Yeah, it actually makes no difference. I only just now figured out why some things weren't produced producing equal numbers when I thought they should. Two of the yellow one science data thingies takes 40 seconds to craft and two take 10. So I made four thermodynamic things each for the two yellow science things to take 40 seconds. Yeah, I, I ran into that trap actually with just vanilla science somewhere. I think it was yesterday when I was or the day before when I was looking at the rates for green science. Because um, I was trying to see if I could just copy paste red science and change the inputs. Uh, but I thought we would need twice as much transport belt. But actually this is 10 seconds instead of 5 seconds. Uh, exact same kind of issue. Uh, is this ship having a problem? Okay, it might be having the best problem, which is to say it's got... Oh. Wait, what? It's a little bit short on media defense, uh, point defense ammo. It's... I need to rename the station, there's too many trains that are heading towards a station with this name. But I don't know... Alright, I'm gonna switch off this constant combinator for the moment. Starfield SV, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Green, green, green. We need ammo. And we need to get rid of an aquatite, more to the point. We've got so much now that 
we really are bottlenecking on getting this new build done, which is a good problem to have. Um, okay. So I think we're going to have probably the exact same train stations. But let's switch that off before... Uh, wait, really? That was... That was like a second. Okay, fine. Deliver it. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to do... I could try something a little different, especially because it's going to be so slow. Oh, we've done this before, actually, I just remembered. Uh, at the blank data card build? Because we get scrap and contaminated. Oh yeah, no, this, this is fine, actually. We get scrap and contaminated scrap so slowly that we just belt it into one chest each like this. And then when that's completely full, a train will take it away. Um, and we've got stack sizes set to 10. So that... That's how we avoid uh, having having an inserter stick out when it when all's said and done. So I'm gonna steal from myself here. But I was having the exact same idea uh, independently, for lack of a better word. So put that right about there and. Instead of scrap on one side, it's going to be sand or stone on one side. Sand and stone. And we need to read from the logistic train stop output to know which resource we're trying to pick up here. What are the spiders doing? I find it difficult to believe they're out of belt. No, there's definitely belt there. So what's going on? Uh, anyway, this has to be sand greater than zero, stack size 10, and this is stone greater than zero, stack size 10. The red wire is going to be connected to the logistic train stop output. And we're not going to summon a train until we've got exactly what it takes to fill it. Oh, this is space belt. That's, there's your problem. Space belt not blue? Yes, indeed. MD strange. Well, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's add a splitter. So each resource is going to be reserved to one side of the belt, just on the off chance that, uh, that we get enough of one to block the other. I doubt it. Okay. Um, could we perhaps, I want it to be symmetrical, but I also want the wiring to reach without adding any more entities. No, how about this? It's fine. 
Alright, so this is going to be sand and stone. Priority pickup. We don't have any fluids that we need to pick up from here. We need those prods. I and uh, my player character is 15, 16 minutes out still. It's a long trip. Let's check that all of our Stardust ships are still working. As we discussed earlier. Uh, you don't appear to be moving. You've got fuel. You've got water. Is this another overfilled one? Oh, yeah. Just need to do that once or twice. Maybe three times? I kind of expected there'd be one or two more of these. It should sort itself out now. Stardust number two uh, is waiting at Nervous. Let's check the water. 24,970 should be functional. Number three is not moving. Uh, is it a water problem? Oh yeah. That would be a water problem. So we're just going to delete about 900 water. Dozaj Lobster? Uh, Loster? Thank you for the follow. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Stardust 4 is in motion. Stardust 5 is picking up. Well, I should check the fluid levels regardless. That one seems fine. I mean, if it's here, it's probably fine. Stardust 6 is at home and is not... Okay, something is busted here. It's... This pump doesn't have the same settings as this one. And because... Yeah, 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 there's the problem. We're pumping in water from both sides, but we're reading the water from the fluid tank on the right here. So there's more of a delay from water being pumped in on this side before it registers on the circuit. So that little bit of extra time that it takes uh, is putting just enough water in this ship that we can't cycle um, water, uh, the steam that condenses back into water back through the system. It deleted all the messages? Oh. Oh, what happened? Yeah, auto mod is like that. What did... Foo dot foo? Is that why it... Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, uh, I think we should take a little break at this point as well. Um, I'm going to go through and check the fluid levels for all of these ships, I think, also. Uh, let's fire up the words onto the stream. And that's going to start in about 30 seconds. And I'll be back in a few minutes.
Okay. How'd y'all do? Pretty well, actually. Skip another two levels. Alright, nicely done. Let's continue with the exploration of the space. Um, I don't remember which ship... Oh, this is... Number six is over full. Um, you know what's easier? Is just deleting one of the tanks. And then we can immediately see if... With our new configuration here, both of these set to 24k. If it's not going to overfill. They're a bit wonky because we emptied this one as opposed to all of them. But it should still be a pretty good indicator. Basically, we want this to be as full as possible with no risk of blocking the water output from the turbine generator. Um, also... I forgot to change that part, so we could have ended up with the ship never taking off. And in fact, if this uh, if this pump over here didn't have... If I didn't forget to update its setting a while ago, we probably would have had the ship sitting here, not launching. Which might be preferable to having it run out of power somewhere. Although, since we can... Ticket dollies and delete fluids, uh, it's a pretty easy fix. Number seven is looking a little bit sad, and it's for the same reason as usual. Just gonna delete almost 900 water, and it should cease to have problems. It sure kidnapped a lot of bots, though. This is why um, at our outposts we have a bunch of bots in chests. 2,000? I guess I got burned by that one time at Deadwood, which was our... literally like 90% of our coal. Uh, we somehow ended up with no bots here, like literally zero logistic bots. Um, so, so this is our reserve of logistic bots now. Because they all got kidnapped and we stopped being able to get any... Uh, any coal core fragment throughput whatsoever here. All right, let's continue with this build. Uh, I wish we still had the productivity modules to get this done. I don't suppose some of them ended up in trash slots somehow? Did we have any more delivered to the mall? Not yet. We've got four. Okay. Yeah, we still don't have the blue circuit throughput that we need. Uh, we are making Holmium Cable though, so that is probably going to pick up. Yeah, that's looking good. This one doesn't have red circuits. Uh, I think I think something got a little bit busted on that build. Yeah, I see what happened here. Let's bring our construction spiders over here for a second. Well, luckily it didn't put, like, red circuits in the wrong chest or something. 
But yeah, um, we should see processing units picked up uh, a while ago. Pretty big gap there. How long till I get back with all these modules? 11 minutes. It's not that bad. But we'll have to go over here for rate calculator. Um, so we have 84 of these. I think I said we need 12 industrial furnaces to keep up with about 14.3 aquium powder. Yeah. So we're going to do 12 of these. We need... I guess I can put those relatively close, but there's no reason. I won't actually connect this yet. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be finalized. One belt of Vitalic Acid is all we need here. And we only need a little bit of... Uh, Vulcanite blocks. Oh, that's actually a perfect fit. Except this part is up here. Never mind. So this is going to be input. Actually, how fast is this? Like, really slow? It's really slow for both input and output. Let's do the both input and output in the middle thing. And long arms. And then output. We just need a pickup. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I almost forgot. Uh, we want. Come to think of it, I could use this design as well over here. That's going to be fairly neat. Uh, I will just double check that 12 of those is still going to be pretty slow. 2.3 per second, yeah. Okay, so we're going to take what we've done here and spin it around. Uh, standard pickup station, sure. The only thing is, these are. This works for both of these being like trash outputs, but theoretically. One day, we would like to have we would like to have this piling up. So I'll add some more chests based on that dear wish. We need the filter version because we're balancing two different resources. However, if we go for four or five chests uh, for each resource, I mean for each cargo wagon, what's kind of weird with five? Uh, if we go for something that multiplies or, or rather divides well into 40 stacks, 
then we can save a bit of circuitry. In fact... The stack size is 10. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit daring here, and we're going to see if we can save a not insignificant amount of circuitry to make this put stuff into the train without the inserter sticking out. So we're going to say stack size 10. That doesn't change. And we're just going to set filters. And we don't need to filter out the... Uh, we don't need this thing contraption to filter out the encoded train like cargo wagon positions and locomotive positions um, because we're not doing math all we need is the uh, the naquium ingot or naquium plate uh, filter that we're going to get from this And because we're not going to have a train come unless it's getting a full train load, it's always going to be picking up one or the other. So set filters, whitelist, stack size 10. And we have a multiple, we have a number of chests that divides evenly or multiplies evenly into the 40 stacks of a cargo wagon. And then we just have to make sure that before the train comes, uh, it's asking for a full train load, we've got more than a full train load, and it's perfectly balanced and or very well balanced and has a little bit more um, than a full train load here. So we might... We might be able to do that with no combinators. This is a new experiment. Because it's so slow as well for both resources, I can go stack size 1 on these filter inserters. And we're going to get a perfectly balanced um, input for each separate resource. Lastly, I would like to... Where are we going to put our beacon here? I want to put it as far... Oh, we can put it in between. That works. So that just barely touches the ones up the top. Uh, we should be able to fit enough uh, plate machines here. Let's see. If we have 12 of these, 2.31 per second. And... I only really want to consume half or slightly more than half. That is probably six. So I was thinking we could put six of these here. That is just barely not still under the beacon. Hmm. I have a better idea. I'm just starting out on SpaceX. Any tips? Um, for the early game? Uh, what thing did I wish I knew earlier on? Oh, uh, well, it depends how early we're talking about, but Space Rail is shockingly cheap, research-wise. And if I'd known just how cheap it is, I would have burrowed straight for this and skipped 
doing like a main bus base in space. Don't build big early? Yeah, you don't really need to. Okay, um... I was thinking even something like this. And I want a circuit condition. I could drag this all the way down so it's closer. Or I could have the furnaces on the sides. I, I think I would rather... Hmm. No, I kind of like this layout. It's sort of different. I want to check how much uh, ingot we've got versus how much plate we've got to decide if we're making plate. Because I want to keep them equal while they're both here. Maybe I shouldn't worry about it so much. Yeah, I probably just shouldn't worry about it that much. Um, so 12 of these, oh well, sorry, 6 of these will use up 1.5 per second out of the 2.3. I think that's probably okay. Wait, does one of these support one of these? I don't think so. No, it's a little bit negative. That might, it's barely negative. That might actually work out pretty well. Uh, I don't want to do it this way. Um, why don't we just... Do it like this. Have a splitter. I'm pretty sure that just barely reaches. Yep. So then we can go... Uh, ingots this way. Oh, how is this one supposed to have output? Good question. Hmm. Spiders to the side. down here. That's a pretty good fit, actually. This will be on that side. This will be on that side. Nice. Although, we're just gonna merge these together and put them on designated sides of the belt anyway. be the maximum. Pretty slow, right? 12 of these. 2.312 per second. 6 of these is 9.5. It's way less than half a bell. So we can just jam that in there. Then this goes here. A repetitive beats. 
think I saw you before, actually. Or was I wrong? I vaguely remember a, a bonk. Maybe it was a different bonk. Anyway, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ingots on one side, plate on the other. Uh, and I'm still debating... Let's circuit control it, why not? We'll do it on the output side of things. So we're going to say if ingot is greater than plate, then we can output plate. Name in base, no worries. I am freaky. Uh, we've got a whole lot more room up here now. I a m. Whoops. M. Ray. Just without the number, or I A M F R E A K Y. Fantastic. Oh, and I didn't even have to move the spiders. Uh, where exactly should we put this, though? Like here, perhaps. We we'll probably move. Get rid of that substation. That the number's fine. Cool. How about this? The bots are a little worn out by this. Oh. What? 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 Um... Confused? Could, could you stop here for a second? Okay, I don't know how that happened. I mean, I think it probably had something to do with the manual order I gave earlier. But that was kind of weird. Uh, let's get the construction spiders involved. If I can find the right remote. There we go. I think the bots are already dibsing to sort that out, actually. Fantastic. Okay. Um... How close are we? Five minutes still. Five more minutes. And then I should have, yeah, way more than enough productivity modules to get this thing done. Uh, let's connect this. Make, make sure the Vitalic Acid goes where we need it to. Here it comes. Looking good. Oh, wait, what? Oh, we already got washed Nacotite here because, yeah, we had a train deliver that earlier. Like, in the second... Uh, wait a sec. Wait, wait a second. Some of these don't have prod modules. Let's avoid... 
Let, let's avoid, uh, no, no, not like that. Let's avoid making any stuff without tier 6 productivity bonuses. Cool. Can we get some more prods downstairs? There's our name. We're still, we still just have four over here. Uh, why don't I... nothing. What? No, we still have 200 here. It was just, it didn't just refresh which logistic network we were in properly. Alright, I'm gonna limit this to say we only need to hold on to 100 for now. And we should get 100 modules delivered over here fairly quickly. Uh, and then we can send it downstairs and get this build complete. So I don't have to personally get there to get it started. Uh, okay, we've already got three other trains doing things there. So is this build actually done? I think so. I'm... I'm quite excited about if this, uh... if this station here works out properly. To have a zero combinator, uh... loading system... We, we do have to sacrifice a few inserters, but to have a zero combinator loading system here that loads different resources without the inserters sticking out. Um, that's pretty neat, actually. Alright, let's name it. Naquium Ingot and Naquium Plate Provider. This one's already set up, except we didn't connect here. Already got that one connected. Seems good. Yeah, we're just waiting on the prods uh, so that we can fire all this up. That looks kind of weird. Oh, and let's make sure that we tell LTN what we've got in our chests and such. We probably just requested some water as well. As long as it doesn't fill up and as long as there's a bit of room in the pipes, um, that shouldn't be a problem. Do we have our prods up here yet? We do not. They are arriving, however. gonna tweak this ever so slightly. That'll launch the moment those get delivered. I need to remember to change it back though. But yeah, um, I mean it took a while to get there but it sort of happened suddenly. Having the good problem to have of needing more Naquium processing. And there goes our ship, I think. Nope. We're having trouble keeping up with giving them media point defense. 
of all things. Oh, that's right. I switched this off so that I could update the station name. What should I even call this? Uh, I'm just going to call it Spaceship. Requester. That's fine. So where are we making ammo here? 861 media point defense. We don't have enough coal. Which would suggest we have zero coal in this block. Are we requesting it? I would imagine so. Yeah, we are requesting coal. Hmm. Um, I wonder if we shouldn't need that much ammo, like, throughput overall, but I almost wonder if I should be manufacturing it elsewhere. Also, how on earth do we not have coal here? Uh-oh. Please tell me the coal throughput isn't broken again. No, it seems to be going at full speed. In fact, we're having trouble outputting here. Uh, looks like we could benefit from putting a splitter here. I think the spiders are close by as well. Uh-oh. Maybe it's time to tap another coal fragment planet. Uh, we've got negative 100 request priority on the coal liquefaction, so I don't think that's the problem. Do we have another coal mine around here somewhere? I think we finished. Okay, what? Okay, we have chests completely full of coal here. Oh, come on. It didn't copy the the constant combinator being connected. Well, that should help. We've got another 3.3 million there. Uh, did we have a similar issue over here? Not judging by the fact that all of this is moving. We do have a coal mine over here that we haven't gotten around to building. I guess it might be time to do that. But not before we finish our... our new block. We've got the productivity modules that we can pick up now. Just send the construction spiders back here and over this way, and that should be everything. Let's change this back so we're not making a trip every hundred productivity modules. We're almost there anyway for all of that trouble. Maybe I should have done something else with that time. just delete this actually and we'll grab our lazy station slash mine there's some water in the way hmm. I'm very tempted to just landfill it
we could do horizontally like this. And then throw out a few extra mines. Is that part going to be covered? No. One off. Fine, be that way. And we'll even grab this 2,000 coal over here. Aren't you at the point where you could mine directly into trains now? Um, that's kind of what we're doing. Sort of. Uh, the point of this blueprint is just to make a mine into a train station with as little effort as possible. So we've got uh, full coverage, just barely, with the miners, uh, the drills. And then going into these chests... Uh, which, with the train stop, directly in the middle of it. Because making mines in Factorio uh, is not my favorite part of it. Alright, so then we just need to... Hmm. There's quite a bit of rail we need to add here. But we'll just connect that to here. Like so. And I'll actually have this one separate as well. Uh, that's a little awkward. Okay. We're going to be needing some power. And another substation. That should do it. I do see the red wire is connected on this blueprint. I was just thinking you have the miner push directly into the wagon and feed the ore patch contents to LTN. That is an interesting idea. Also, I think they added functionality to miners that I don't think they used to have, or maybe this is part of the mod. Um, it's not going to break it if I connect these, right? Default is read resources. I think that used to be the only thing you could do with this. You can actually enable or disable a mining drill as well. Uh, I'm sure there's times that you would want to do that. Theoretically. I don't think we can connect to the core mining drills. No, we can't. But what you can do... Core mining drills, as big as they are, just like regular mining drills, have a minimum power consumption of zero. So, if you just block... Well, I guess it doesn't... The fact that that's true doesn't change the next part. Uh, if you just block the belt, uh, like disable this part of the belt right here. Um, it's going to have the same effect as turning off the miner, just with a, a slight delay sometimes. Hey, we're here. Let's get in our spider. And... I guess I'll ride my old personal shuttle downstairs. We should already have the prods 
Oh, the spiders. I I'm going to race the spiders there. We're going to beat them. I'm carrying like 250 productivity modules. Let's go to Nels. Launch. And go. Well, we're not feeding this one a speed signal. Uh, there, there it is, yeah. I think you'd either need to send it these figures or uh, give it a speed signal with circuit wire. It feels weird to be in such a slow ship again. Enable disable is new, I think. It's probably a vanilla feature. Yeah, I, sus I sus uh, strongly suspect it is. Anchor on Nalavis. I don't think we're going to be needing this part of the block. Uh, I need the roboports again. And once they charge. There we go. Fantastic. Now we can reconnect these bits of belt. And let the Naquitite flow. Or is it Naquium? When is it Naquium and when is it Naquitite? It's Naquitite when we first mine it. Then it's crushed Naquitite. Then it's washed Naquitite. Then it's Naquium powder. So once it becomes a powder, it's Naquium. What is going on up here? I think this is possibly... Oh, I think the 9k was based on more chests. Yeah. Um, so how much is in there right now? Let's just see. 20 times 480 is 9,600. Wait, what? We're only requesting 9,000. Request stack threshold, 160. So... I didn't get around to doing a balancer thing. Whoops. Actually... Yeah, no. If this was connected, it would have been a little imbalanced, but not too bad. These are all satisfied, right? Um, but yeah, I should have done a proper balancer here, I think. Where are my combinators? I'm going for 20 chests. Divided by 20. Not put each. I think that negative. And then red wire connects. Green wire connects. Actually, we're gonna go Naquitite specific. What? 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 Naquit. Naquitite specifically. And then we're gonna go less than or equal to zero. Not greater than or equal to zero means we're above average. Alright, that should pretty easily be able to maintain uh, a full belt. Let's rebalance this and find out. Um, 
Oh, I see. Whoops. I forgot the red wires for the rest of these. That looks like a full belt so far, but the other inserters haven't finished. Why does why is this one getting ahead? Average is 364. You're at 271 and you're still going. Uh, I think I did get this backwards. We want it to be... It's enabled if less than zero. So if we have above average, we want it to be disabled. Yeah, that's right. Zero being average. This one still seems to be going. Wait, what? Do we have a wire not connected right or something? Reprioritize letter output? Oh yeah, that too. Thank you. But that's not the problem that we're not solving right now. No, it's... I was right the first time. If it's greater than or equal to average, we want it to be enabled. And if we have less than the average, we want it to be disabled. Let's rebalance that again. Okay, so they should all start enabled, and naturally the ones at the back would be able to empty faster. It's still going. Oh, wait, hold on. 20 chests divided by negative 20 output. It is the Naquitite as well, it's not like some weird recipe delivery cannon capsule Naquitite thing or something. Oh, I think I see the problem. I was reading hand contents as well. That shouldn't make that much of a difference, although it does look like it's starting to work correctly. All right, once more, rebalance. Whoops. Uh, well, that one's ahead of the average now. And it seems to be switched on. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's good. Okay. We got there eventually. So it's going to unload in a balanced fashion, and this thing at the end is going to get enough. Those are the two conditions we're trying to meet. Looks pretty good. And let's look at the graph. What? Oh. That was supposed to be just a piece for the wire to connect off. Oh, I didn't realize that would happen. Um, but then normally it would be so slow that it wouldn't matter. Yeah, that's fine, actually. In fact... We could just do it like this. What's going on here? Uh, there's not 24 chests, that's what's going on.
and now they have to play catch up even though they could normally keep up. So because these have a stack size of one, we should see perfect balance across all of these chests, which means we can set the provide stack threshold to 160, and we're not going to get any weirdness um, with a certain inserter not, not having enough resources. That's looking pretty good. And I'll just confirm once more. We're not bottlenecking on a belt somewhere. It's only 14.3 aquium powder per second. So yeah, that's actually fine. It feels strange at the end of like this towards the end of such a long uh, mod playthrough to be playing with such low throughput values, like going back to being a beginner or something. Do you really need perfect balance though? I imagine it'd be fine if they differed by a full hand size. Um, so normally the precise loaders that we use have 24 inserters or 48 in this case. And, good timing, these ones here have to put in just a little bit extra. Um, and then I found that was a problem if we had exactly the right amount. Uh, I think we would... Pr if we had, like, exactly 160 stacks and these weren't perfectly balanced, I think we'd run into the same problem here, because we've got them all set to stack size 10... Um, we might end up with an inserter sticking out, holding onto one of the resources afterwards. I'm not sure. But in any case, because the input is so slow, there's absolutely no reason why we can't set the stack size to 1. That's kind of cool to watch. Nice. Alright, so let's have a look at our Aquium Ingot production over the last... Wow. We went from 58 to like 200. It's, it's like tripled or quadrupled the rate that we are making Naquium ingots right now. So our new normal is uh, about 180 per minute, give or take. Looks like it's closer to 190. So about 3 per second. Uh, that still takes uh, about nine minutes to fill a train with ingots, and that ignores turning some of them into plate. So we definitely might still want to go a bit faster than this, but all we have to do now to make that happen is build another block. Unfortunately, I landed my ship in the middle of this block, so we're not going to be able to copy-paste it in one go, but that's okay. We should have enough modules to make this happen. Uh, 
right about there. Make sure the spiders get it all done. And let's head to the middle. So we can drop off all the prods. I hope we still have enough. I think we might. How many prods does it take to build this? Uh, 374. No, I, I don't think we can get it done in one go. Although I could be wrong. I think we're going to be a bit short. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's not... Let's not just yet. I should put some of these uh, rod nines in place, though. Oh, I forgot to pick some up from the mall upstairs. We've also got, like, two of them over here, I think. Yeah, literally two. Let's grab those. Executor Online, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Rubber Band Rambo, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Missed some rails top right corner in the new block. Odd is Phillips, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, the spiders are on their way to build that. It should be okay. Unless they've run out. We'll see. City blocks with rails. Are your blueprints available somewhere? Yes, they are. And thanks, Dardano. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, putting these four prod nines in place gives us four more prod sixes to play with as well. But I don't think we're going to have enough in the very short term. We need we need way more processing units. That plastic shortage is not doing us too many favors. Didn't copy the ones for the station to the roundabout in that corner? To the roundabout in that corner. The ones for the station. Oh. Uh, I don't know if this is what you meant, but we did miss this the first time we built it. Oh, I see. Thank you. And here as well. It's not super critical, but if a train was sitting in there, others wouldn't be able to use the roundabout. We're not going to have trains coming here that often, so it wouldn't have been that bad. Still not good. Oh no, why am I holding Naquitite? Don't put that in my logistic trash slots, please. Um, I'm just going to put it in a requester chest, and then turn this back on. And then once, once they bring me my prod nines,
Hard to tell working on Naquium production, indeed. Been lurking, very comfy and enjoyable streams. Thank you. Alright, we got our prod nines. Fantastic. I'll be taking these back to where they belong. And I think there's like another two. There's five. We have to get up there. Get those prod nines in place. I guess I could steal from the now old uh, Necrotite block. I'll just leave it for now. Spiders. Oh, and we need to get them to place all of those extra signals. Maybe cut off the supply to the old block? Yeah, I was thinking about that, but I sort of... Honestly, I'm procrastinating it. <laughs> Because then I have to clean up the old stuff, and there's going to be, like, half-finished bonus production for Naquitite, and that feels like a terrible waste. What are you going to do? I totally get that, yeah. I'm fairly happy with this block, though. This part looks a little weird, but who really cares? It's all... It all fits under the one beacon, and we've got some nice balancing here. It's a lot more responsive when we control... Um... Well, I guess we're not immediately counting it. It has to get down here. But when we control based on output instead of input, it's sort of much more responsive that way. Is there something with your PC specs to help with UPS or Factorio graphics settings? It's really not the graphics. Um, graphics are like pretty trivial for this computer to deal with as far as Factorio is concerned. All right, we're going to put the prods in here. And then we have a whole four of them to play with. Oh my goodness. I'm going to get in the spaceship, come back with the rest of those prods. And come to think of it, a I... Okay. I guess we've got a bunch of productivity modules that are like a hundred that are available upstairs as well. How many do we need right now? 138? It's cutting it close. Don't we literally still have 38 exactly right here if things haven't changed? 36! No! Okay. Uh, next. Quitite can go in here, please. Factorio can run comfortably on just integrated graphics. I heard that was not so much the case these days, depending on your settings, but um, that was my experience. Like, I had a much older computer for a very long time in the last few years, and I never had a problem with Factorio's graphics. Now this orbit. Let's go. Why is our target speed in an asteroid belt higher than our usual? I had it run fine on an old i5-8400, pretty outdated CPU. Yeah, it's not the CPU either. Um, we got halfway through this uh, space exploration run, upgraded the RAM, and it made a enormous difference. 
cannot, uh, I can scarcely exaggerate it. I think we went from like 30 UPS at the time to 50. Uh, let's get in a spider. I'll take these ones. And I don't suppose we have like two more. We have a hundred prod sixes, but actually I think the five prod nines are going to displace like a couple that we need to fill out that block. The graphics, I mean, the CPU can't run a mega base. Uh, not, it's not the GPU that's the bottleneck. Yeah. Did you mean to say the GPU can't run a mega base? Or am I just getting myself confused? Prod nines are on the way. Actually, I'll take all of the tier 9 modules right now. Just so I know where they are as much as anything else. Need decent RAM to make CPU capable of being the bottleneck. CPU can't run a megabase, GPU has no impact on how well it runs the megabase. Uh, okay. I think I'm still confused, but maybe that's just because I'm running out of steam. I need another heat exchanger. Good question, Krasis. I'm not that well informed on these things. Okay, uh, so how long until we get a delivery if we don't force it? Ooh, relatively soon. So we have 12 out of 15,000. We're looking for 3,000 plate. And in the last 10 minutes, we've been making... A bit under 200 per second, uh, per minute rather, per second. Call it 185 pessimistically per minute. Um, so it should be about 16 minutes in game before this thing launches with 12,000 plates. And about the same time, the ingots. Let's take this thing down. To the mall. I guess we have to fly over there first. DDR5 produces... provides twice the bandwidth and density of 4? Wow. Nice coffin. <laughs> Thank you. This thing's actually literally just to run a handful of products back and forth uh, between the two malls. Well, not exactly between the two malls, but more like down from space. Uh, I need to reconfigure the mo uh, remote every single time. Alright, so we've got 140 
plus the five prog nines. I was trying to do this actually. Temps really should not be any consideration with how fast a CPU runs. If it is throttling trying to run Factory, the cooling solution is insufficient. Yeah, unless you've uh, overclocked it. In which case you could still say the cooling solution is insufficient, I guess. not bandwidth but the latency. All CPUs auto overclock to their thermal limits these days? Hmm. Oh, as in they prevent you from overclocking them to the point of melting. Is that what you mean? Is this thing okay? Uh, yes, yes it is. The only reason it's not taking off is because we have too much Naquitite. This is a good problem. Except now we need, like, we really need to fix, um, the throughput of blue circuits mostly so we can get more modules so we can keep building this also I oh I did pick up some more tier 9 modules um, I didn't check the rate difference with this yet we're still positive on crushed naquitite well, that's extremely convenient. That is just perfect, actually. Cool. Uh, I think we got all of our prods in. Fantastic. Now... Now we go even more faster. Uh, with the settings that we've got with LTN, it should only take a couple of seconds before we've got some Naquitite on the way, not to mention water. Should. What's going on here? Oh. Well then, that... Oh. Uh, okay. How about, how about if actually we do power these inserters? Oh, I still didn't copy that part, whoops. Okay, I think I think a rebalancing is in order. It's probably not that important, maybe, but I would rather be sure. And once the Vulcanite blocks have done their thing as well... Rebalance. Trains are on their way. Uh, quite a lot of them, actually. That's weird. One, two... We've got eight trains heading towards stations that are called Naquatite and Water Wester. That seems like a lot. Let's add some... Uh, icons here. Oh. Hmm. 
Very excited to see this. We're finally arriving in terms of Nequitite throughput that is consistent and not practically zero. Very, very nice. Why is this stopped, though? Oh. The water output is full. What? Oh, no. Uh, okay. I didn't connect the pipes up. And it's been working just fine for a while because it doesn't produce water that quickly. And then, same thing over here. I think my bots have already done that, actually. Seems good. There we go. There's lots of stuff in space exploration like that because of the side outputs. Um, where you'll think you've finished a build and then a certain set of buildings will output it will have their products finished count set to six indefinitely and then you look back at it eventually and wonder why it's got like a tenth of the throughput that it's supposed to have hey Raren good to see you again welcome welcome hope you're doing well I want to start playing around with LTN, but not sure how to start. Do you have some good resource on where I can look up stuff? Or is it more of a case in try, trial and error? Uh, a little bit that, but I did actually throw together a sort of uh, just unrehearsed live tutorial thing uh, for LTN. I'll see if I can link it in the discord after the stream today that's going to be in like 12 minutes um i could maybe think about doing something a bit more rehearsed but yeah i did i did throw that together already um the main with just a minute to say so uh the main recommendations i have is look at the mod settings because there's stuff in there that I have my own opinions and preferences and everything, but uh, what I feel like I could say almost objectively is the com certain combinations of the default settings are basically like a newbie trap. Um, you're going to get more than one train scheduled to go to a station, even though you set a train limit of one if a train takes more than 10 minutes to get there for some reason. Uh, you're going to have trains, without you putting in a request or provide threshold, they're going to come to pick up a thousand resources. And then with a default of, where is it? Finish loading. Uh, it's going to, con the, the inserters, unless you built some you know, specific circuitry to control this, which if you're using all default settings, you probably didn't do that. Uh, it's going to come looking for a thousand resources and it's going to get an entire train load, if possible, of those resources. And then with that thousand request threshold, it's going to take that train load full of stuff to a station that it is going to overfill. And then after two minutes, uh, it's going to go back to the depot full of resources. Um, I don't think that's an optimal uh, turn of events for someone who's just trying to learn LTN. So definitely look over the mod settings for LTN is the number one piece of advice I could give. Um, the rest is basically just understand that 
it's a bit counterintuitive at first that a negative is a request, but if you consider that for a provider station, all you have to do is connect the wire to the chest uh, with the LTN train stop input, a positive value represents that a station has something, and a negative value represents that it wants something. Uh, and in Factorio, uh, positive and negative values of the same signal get implicitly added or subtracted. So that works out very succinctly. Okay, I see we'll have to go through the settings then. Thanks for the info, no worries. Positive is excess and negative is requesting. Yeah, and if you do like what I've done here and set... I don't know if you can do like negative one. No, it doesn't let you do that. Uh, to say like no request threshold. I just set this as high as I could. Uh, I wonder if I could go even higher. I could. I wonder what the limit is. Um... That's probably why I thought this number was the maximum. But yeah, I set this basically as high as I could so that I have to um, put in a request or provide threshold in order for the station to behave as that. And something I'm just recently realizing, uh, I was talking about this earlier in the stream, we can have tier 6 modules, for example, being provided to the rail network by this mall, it doesn't actually produce them, they're produced over here, but it requests them, and then it also offers them to the mall. So, like, we have a stash of them over here, and then some get taken over here. At the station that offers... Um, just imagine there's a positive value here of everything that's in the robot network. That's how this, that's what this wire is doing. Uh, but if we have a negative number for our modules here, it's going to mean it's basically pretending that 200 of these modules don't exist. Um, and because this if we have no modules here, and then we have negative 200 on this thing, if we had a like default request threshold uh, that was low enough for that to kick in, you'd get a train coming here thinking, uh, like trying to deliver modules to what is a pickup station. But if we have the request threshold set high enough so that basically this can't be a requester station, uh, it allows us to play with things like this. So we can actually make uh, a station or a block or whatever you want to think of it as, as sort of holding on to a certain amount of resources, but also offering up the excess, which I think is kind of neat. There really is a ton you can do with LTN once you get your head around it. It goes pretty far beyond just adding what I wish vanilla included. That sounds neat, indeed. Try and play around with it, no worries. If you have any questions that come up from time to time, uh, by all means hit me up on the Discord. That would actually... if I do make a scripted tutorial uh, one day, that would actually probably help me write it. Also, the fact that you can use networks to create sub-networks is also great in LTN. Yeah, and I love the way they implemented that as well. Uh, I was talking about this yesterday. The fact that basically the default is that a station can interact with any other station. And then I can make exceptions to that by saying uh, input to this storage area is on encoded network ID 1. Output to this storage area is on encoded network ID 2. These two stations will not interact with each other. But 
they can interact with any other station that has no encoded network ID. Um, when I first built this thing, that's like the last place any resource ends up being taken, uh, I thought I would have to go through like all of my train stations all over the place. All of the ones providing like iron ore, copper, etc. And give them certain uh, encoded network IDs. Well, not just them, but like every station. Um, but it turned out all I had to do was encoded network ID 1 on these ones and encoded network ID 2 on any finite resource that I don't want to get taken straight there. Really, really easy once you wrap your head around it. We still haven't had a delivery of plate. Oh, well, I guess it takes a lot. But yeah, let's have a look at... We've got both of these blocks working now, right? Yeah, that looks good. Aquium plate. Line go up. Line go up sharply right now. I don't... I think it's a bit too soon to get a feel for what our actual rate of production is for this. Line go brr, indeed. Alright, well, that is a pretty satisfying place to end the stream, actually. Uh, let's see who's playing Factorio right now. And next time... Next time, hopefully, we can start really churning out some signs. I really want Arcospheres. Uh, we won't be seeing this moving just... It was on 4% before, right? We won't be seeing that moving until... Uh, our shuttles come up with more... That's the wrong block, isn't it? Here it is. Until our shuttles come up with more stuff. And there's not much point, like, sending them prematurely, because it's such a small amount overall, compared to what we need to feed signs. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Dardano. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you all hanging out. Uh, let's drop in on... How about Sushi Cat? I think they'll find that to be a pleasant surprise. Uh, let me get the name right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And, uh... Send some love to Sushi. Take care, guys. See you at Evil Plot. Oh no! Tyrannosaurus hacks just raided us. <laughs> I gotta freaking disable that one. Yay, raid! Thank you. Welcome. You, got no oh, you, I, you would raid me on the day when all my shit's not set.